Hey guys, welcome to the channel, as you see in the thumbnail what if Deku married with 15 girls. Before I start, please do support for more awesome content and subscribe my channel and like this video. Let's start this video. The boy himself was a somewhat short for his age, his round face framed by a short mess of fluffy dark green hair, which sticks up at odd angles around his head, casting noticeably dark shadows onto itself. His eyes are large and somewhat circular, there are eyes as the same green color as his hair, which at times are very watery, usually stretched quite wide, giving him an innocent appearance. He has a set of four symmetrical freckles and diamond formations, one on each cheek, but despite these prominent traits, he's often described by others as being plain looking. He was wear some shorts a t-shirt of the number one pro hero All Might and a green party hat. He is Izuku Midoriya, but him was his mother a slim woman who had short hair with a ponytail on the left. Inko Midoriya. And she was getting mad. I can't believe those people. Inko thought as she comforted her son. Ass I told you they wouldn't come anti Inko. Another boy said. Said boy was of average height, with a slim, muscular build and fair skin tone. He has short spiky ash blonde hair with choppy bangs that hang over his eyebrows. His eyes are sharp and bright red in color. He is Katsuki Bakugo. Next to him was a woman with ash blonde hair and red eyes. Her aforementioned traits are shared with her son Katsuki. She maintains a youthful appearance, despite being in her mid-thirties. She is Mitsuki Bakugo. Damn those Inko I'm so sorry. Mitsuki said. It's okay Mitsu-chan, but god I wish for just one good birthday. Inko said as she shakes her head. Dust the Mizuku. Katsuki said as Izuku wipes his tears. Thank you Kaken. Izuku said as he hears a knock on the door. Everyone hears this, and Inko comes towards the door she opens the door to reveal a bizarre old man with a long nose, pointed ears and bulging, bloodshot eyes. He wears a black suit with white gloves. He appears to be quite tall when fully stood up. Um may I ask who you are? Inko asked. Ah yes I am Igor and no young man I have no relation to Dr. Frankenstein assistant. Igor said as Katsuki snapped his fingers. Inko sweat dropped at this, and she looked at Igor and felt that she knew him. Igor said um have we met? Inko asked. Indeed I was the bookie of the poker table you played five years ago. Igor said with a smile. Inko looked confused until her eyes widened. Oh my I think I do. Oh Igor said would you like to come in? Inko said. Of course Inko. Igor said as he came in. Now then Igor first off I want to apologize for leaving abruptly five years ago. Inko said. It's alright Inko I believe it's time to tell you what you had won. Igor said. Oh right so what did I win? Inko asked. Of course the main reason that I'm here will be discussed later, but for now it's time for the prizes. First off you have won 3 billion dollars United States dollars, next up 50,000 platinum bullions, and two boxes of Britannia's finest wine from the year 1969. 2,000 Hoshiden Kobans and a bottle of Yado's Choice Sake. A case of Canopy Grand Cigars along with some jewelry. A plot of land that's on Hawaii in your world, no idea how that blasted troll got it, 50 additional years of life, but it can be divided in half for your future spouse, along with eternal youth. And finally a guaranteed pass to heaven for your family. Oh there is more, but the young man wanted to give him your reward personally Igor said. Dead silent was always that it. Um what the dot Izuku of all people said. Oh Izuku the last part involves you. Igor said. It does. Um what is it? Izuku asked. Um I think I was still a bit drunk at that part, what was the last part? Izuku asked. Oh of course the last part is wedding contracts for young Izuku here. Igor said shocking Izuku. Huh? What? Izuku shouted still shocked at this. But the flying Mitsuki said. Put the goddamn words right out of my ing mouth you hag. Katsuki said. My baby is getting married Inko shouted. Everyone please calm down I know this seems odd, but I can assure you that this is indeed the case in fact family members and some friends of the women that Izuku will be marrying are currently in a restaurant waiting for you to meet them along with the girls that Izuku is to marry. Igor said as everyone were still shaking at what they have been told. Um I think we should go at the very least to meet them. Izuku said calming everyone down. Yo Igor we want in on this. Mitsuki said as Igor nods and takes out a velvet blue key, puts it on a wall and turns it. Once that happened a velvet blue door appears before them, and they walk in, with some hesitation from the Midoriyas, and when they came out they were at the restaurant. Inko saw them and some of them did not look happy. Um hello I'm Midoriya Inko for some it's nice to meet you, but for others it's nice to see you again. Inko as this calmed the other mothers down. The first set of parents approached Inko she noticed that they both had brown hair and eyes the wife looked like she wanted to murder him, and she looked at Inko like she wanted to apologize. Hello there I'm Yuraka Saya, and this buffoon is my husband Yuraka Kinshiro, and our daughter Yuraka Achako. Saya said as she introduced herself and her family. It's nice to see you again Inko. Kinshiro said as he shivers under his wife's glare. Achako is a short girl of slender yet feminine build. 
She is fair-skinned with a perpetual blush on her cheeks. Her eyes are large and round, there are eyes as a warm brown, with rather thick upper eyelashes, two longer and more prominent ones protruding outwards on either side, and fewer but more individually pronounced lower eyelashes. Shoulder length and about the same color as her eyes, her hair is bobbed and curved inwards at the ends, two longer clumps taking the same shape on either side of her face, and short bangs that reach roughly a quarter of the way down her forehead. On the top inner segment of each of her fingers, she has a small pink pad, somewhat resembling the toe of a cat or a dog's paw, which she uses when activating and deactivating her quirk. She is wearing a pink dress and has some shoes on. Um hi it's nice to meet you Izuku. Achako said. You you ah it's nice to meet you as well Achako. Izuku said with a slight stutter. Thank you Izuku-san. Achako said with a blush. Inko looks at the two and smiled a bit another pair came up to them. One was a giant of a man most likely the father the other was a woman half his size glaring at him with a no nookie glare. I'm Hatsune Yuna this loud is my husband Hatsune Yuno. Yuna said. Um hi listen I know I owed you, but can it not be mine and my wife's greatest creation? Yuno said as Igor intervened. I'm sorry Mr. Hatsune, but I'm afraid all wagers are final. Igor said as Yuno slumped. Yuno sighs at this. I knew you say that anyway this is May I hope your son can take care of her. Yuno said as he pats May in the back. May is a reasonably short girl with quite a mature build. She has salmon pink hair, which is generally shoulder length, although it does vary, which is styled into thick dreadlocks and side swept to her right. Her eyes are wide and sloped upwards with some notably long upper eyelashes, there are eyes as yellow with a cross in the center, making them look somewhat like scope lenses. Uh oh right the new hubby thing, I'm a bit short and wimpy, but nothing like some exercise can't fix, oh, I have a great for some new babies for exercise that will help him and pro heroes. May said as Inko eyebrow twitched upon hearing May calling her son wimpy. Izuku blushed on the W baby bit. I I it's nice to meet you as well May. Izuku said. Sure thing Izuku. May said. The next person came up to them was one of the fiancés herself, she is a relatively petite fair-skinned girl who is very prone to blushing and is frequently described as having a rather pretty face. She has slightly inward tilting eyes, her eyes is bright yellow and their pupils thin slits, making them somewhat resemble those of a cat, and her wide mouth is also rather feline, as both her upper and lower canines are more pointed and longer than the rest of her teeth. Her hair is a pale, dirty ash blonde and is styled into two messy buns, numerous wild strands sticking out at all angles from their centers and where they're fastened, a straight fringe and two chin-length side bangs to frame her face. Her outfit consists of a plain sifuku with a kansai collar, both the skirt and the shirt dark blue with a double white trim, which is paired with a red scarf that she ties loosely below. Over this, she wears an oversized beige cardigan with a rather long hem and cuffs and pockets on either side, the right one shown to hold a number of trinkets on either a keychain or a cell phone strap. She sports knee-length black socks and dark brown dress shoes with thick heels. Um hi I'm Himiko Toga I'm sorry my parents couldn't make it, but they told me to give you this and that they're quite happy I am to marry your son. Himiko said as she gave a bottle of expensive sake. Inko couldn't help but notice that it seemed rehearsed. Hello Himiko-chan I'm Izuku. Izuku said which me Himiko blush a bit. Thank you Izuku-kun. Himiko said still blushing. It was then three more people went towards Inko and Izuku. The first is a petite fair-skinned girl with a slender build. She has triangular, lazy-looking onyx eyes with notably long lower eyelashes and rather small eyebrows. Her hair is short, only around chin length, and is dark purple in color with an asymmetrical fringe and two reflections shaped like heartbeat monitor waves on either side of her head. Her most prominent features are the flexible, plug-like earphone jacks hanging from each of her earlobes at the end of two thin cords, which act like extra limbs. She was dressed in a pink and purple dress, some socking, pink shoes, red fingerless gloves, a black choker and a flower on her hair. In between her were her parents. The mother has short dark purple hair with bangs falling to the right side of her face and wears glasses, and like her daughter, she has plug-like earlobes. The father meanwhile has wavy shoulder-length light gold hair and triangular eyes like his daughter's. The girl looked like she didn't want to be here, the mother looked ashamed, and the father was glaring at the mother and gave Izuku a small glance. It was a bit silent until Inko broke it. Um I suppose you are for the marriage thing right? Inko nervously asked. Yes I'm Jiro Mika and this is my husband Jiro Kayatoku. Mika said as she introduced herself and her husband. Yeah I'm guessing this is kid that's taking my lyrical princess away. Kayatoku said pissing off said lyrical princess. I'm Jiro Kayoka your bride or whatever. Kayoka said not happy about this. Um it's nice to meet you Kayoka-chan I know this is not how a marriage is supposed to be, but I hope to be a good husband to you and the others. Izuku said with a smile that rivaled the sun. And he's acting like a good husband to be. Well might as well to get used to him. Kayoka thought with a smile. Well then we might as well get to know each other, so do you have a favorite band? Kayoka asked. 
Um well I like the pre-quirk band Sabaton. Izuku said with a small blush. Ayoko along with the other Jiros looked at him. So what your top three? Kayatoku asked. Fields of Verdon, White Death and Firestorm. Izuku said with a smile. Which song got you hooked to Sabaton? Mika asked with a raised eyebrow. Winged Hussars. Izuku said with a smile. As Izuku and the Jiro family talked a bit about music. Igor took the opportunity to interrupt them. Now then I believe it's to meet the next ones. Carolyn and Justine you can come and meet your new husband now. Igor said as two sets of footsteps are heard. What came out appeared to be young girls with platinum blonde hair and yellow eyes. The twins both wear a black eye patch with a letter V over one of their eyes and a blue prison guard outfit. One twin has a long braid and a hat with the letters OYOO, while the other twin has hair buns and a hat with the letters XMRN. The letters appear to spell oxymoron. They wear a brassard on their left arm. They also have matching black ties. The twin with buns has an electric shock baton to intimidate Izuku, which worked and Inko was none too happy about that. I am Carolyn. The bun-haired twin said. And I am Justine. The braided twin said. We are the velvet twins it is nice to meet Izuku Midoriya. Carolyn and Justine said at the same time. But nice to meet you too as well. Izuku said with a smile that made both of them blush. Oh of course you should be honored to marry us. Carolyn said as she stuttered with a blush. I agree but I also hope that we can a longing relationship with you Izuku-san. Justine said as she tried to cover her blushing face with the clipboard she had. Seeing the two of them blush made Inko chuckle Kitsuki on the other hand. The twins this is Eki and I'm harem levels of what to hear. Kitsuki said flabbergasted at this. Took the words right out of my mouth brat. Mitsuki said until she saw a family of four coming towards Inko, Kitsuki saw this. Boy auntie Inko a family coming towards you. Kitsuki said. The family looked like a traditional Japanese family two men and two women, three of them had red hair and one of them gray hair. They were all wearing traditional Japanese clothing from the Sengoku Jidai era, the eldest from what Inko saw had a daisho, the youngest was dressed as a shrine maiden with a festal, and the other boy had an ornate yumi. Are you Midoriya Inko? The eldest asked. I am and you are? Inko said. I am Hashido Ryoma you met my father Hashido Sumeragi I am saddened to say that he is no longer with us and as the eldest son, I am in charge of my father's debts that also includes my sister's marriage with your son. Ryoma said as he bowed. Oh damn sorry to hear that. Mitsuki said as Achakos and Mei's families gave their condolences to the Hashido family. I thank you for your kind words. The little shrine maiden said. Ryoma said allow my son and I to give our condolences to your family I did not know Sumeragi well. But from what I can remember he always had you and your siblings in his mind. Inko said. Thank you Inko-san. The gray-haired boy. Boy. How about we introduce Izuku his. Kitsuki said as he counted off all the girls Izuku met. Seventh fiancé. You're right please allow me to introduce you to Hinoka. Ryoma said. Hinoka has short red colored hair with matching eyes, she is wearing a white and red kimono with floral patterns. She is also wearing some makeup and wearing some jewelry. Hello I am Hinoka it is nice to meet you Izuku-san. Hinoka said being polite to her husband to be. Hinoka said I want you to know that if you ever need a shoulder to cry on I will happily provide it. Izuku said. Thank you Izuku-kun. Hinoka mumbled as she blushed a bit. Um hello can we move on here. A male voice shouted. Samson read the room will you? A female voice said annoyed at the now named Samson. Philia really you need to introduce Arabella to them already. Samson said as the now named Philia sighs. I am so sorry everyone Samson is being in Philia said as her hair raising up. Two women came towards the Midorias. Yo what's up? Samson said as he waves a hair tentacle thing. The Hashido family gasped at this Izuku looked interested, Inko, Kitsuki, Mitsuki, Carolyn and Justine didn't bat an eye at this. Um is that your quirk Philia san? Izuku asked. Nope, Samson here is a parasite he bonded with me after I was about to die oh I forgot to mention I'm Philia Medici, my grandfather was the one that played against Inko. Philia said though she said grandfather in a way that made Philia think she ate something nasty. Oh I see and where is your grandfather? Inko asked. I'd like to say jail, but even I know that he's most likely six feet under. Philia said with a smile on her face. Um did he do something bad? Izuku innocently asked. To sum it all up Izuku he was a mob boss. Philia said. One of the worst, the Medici familia well to call them cruel is a ing understatement hell 99% of the Medicis are Samson said. I'm guessing Philia is of the 1%. Izuku asked. Bingo kiddo now it's time to meet your bride to be Sarabella. Samson said in an announcer type tone as Sarabella walked towards Izuku as he chuckled at what Samson did while Philia fascibumed. Sarabella has light brown skin and mint green hair color, tied up in a sharp ponytail. She wears purple eyeshadow, as well as matching mint green tick and nail polish. She has a small purple diamond tattooed on her left cheek. Her eyes have alternatively been portrayed as being black or purple. 
Her outfit is befitting that of a performer. A bright orange strapless low-cut mini dress with a band of cloth with an orange and black triangle pattern around her upper arms, billowing cream sleeves and maroon appendages on the cuffs, and a black choker. She wears black thigh-length boots with an orange diamond pattern along the length of each boot that are pointed at the ends, similar to medieval Krakos, and have a skull sitting each bridge. Her underwear is shown to be white. With vice versa and its dominant form atop her head, her resemblance to a jester becomes more apparent. Hey I'm Sarabella it's so nice to meet you Azuzu. Sarabella said as she hugged her husband to be with her bountiful dot. Izuku was blushing up a storm. Um Siri I think your future husband needs to breathe. Philia said as Sarabella gets Izuku out of her so that he could breathe. You 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 um it's nice to meet Sarabella. Izuku said with a massive blush on his face. Well at least Inko doesn't have to worry about not having grandkids. Speaking of which go find a nice girl and get me grandkids you damn brat. Mitsuki said as she shouted that last part. After collage you stupid ing hag. Katsuki shouted back as another woman came up to Izuku. At least Katsuki has his priorities straight. Inko thought. Um are you Mr. Midoriya? The woman asked. I am and you are? Izuku asked. I am Florence Nightingale. Florence said. Florence has long braided sliver pink hair and red eyes. She wears a red coat and a black skirt with res trim, with white boots and gloves, she also had an eye patch on her right eye, a pistol in its holster, and two large field medic bags. You mean the lady with the lamp that Nightingale the woman who standardized modern nursing dot Izuku, said before Florence interrupted him. Yes I know that I'm supposed to be dead, but all I can say is that thanks to a certain trollish dead apostle I live once more and to be your bride of all things. Florence said annoyed at said troll. Um how did he do it and why you? Izuku asked. Florence seeing how it was an honest question gave a small smile. Um well all I know is that in my world there's a cup that contains the souls of heroes, be it divine origin like Ishtar or Gilgamesh to historical like myself, and for some reason some of those souls are um, I believe the phrase is genderbent, a good example would be King Arthur or Jack the Ripper. As for the how he somehow took my soul from said cup and made me a new body, I still have no idea why he didn't heal my other eye. As for the why the troll said sabers, riders, rulers and especially casters are overdone, it's time for berserkers to shine. Florence said. Okay two things. One that set up and two how the nine living s is a nurse in berserker. Kitsuki shouted confused at this. Any sensible person would never make the connection between a nurse and a berserker. I have no bloody clue. Florence said with a shrug. Well it seems that we're not the first ones to arrive. A woman's voice said. Indeed, mother. A young man said. Big brother I know you tried to stop the inevitable. A young woman voice said annoyed at the young man. Nunnally the only reason you're marrying him is because of father. The young man said. Lelich I know you're angry at your father, but Inko won fair and square. The woman said. I know mother I'm just angry I shouldn't take my anger at Izuku right. Lelich said as his mother confirmed that it was his name. Hello Ms. Midoriya I am Marianne by Britannia. Marianne said as both she and Inko shake hands. It's nice to meet you as well Marianne. Inko said as she got a good look at them. Lelich is a handsome young man with black hair and violet eyes, which he inherited from his mother. Lelich is somewhat scrawny, having little muscle, and like most characters in the series, is rather thin. In spite of this, Lelich is considerably tall. He was dressed a white robe with gold accents and a matching hat. Mary Ann was a beautiful young woman who had a slim yet strong build, a tall height, and fair skin. Like her son Lelich, she had big violet eyes and black hair, although she had it much longer and wavier. Mary Ann wore fashionable dresses of elegant blue colors with slightly extravagant accessories. Nunnally on the other hand has brown curly hair which lasts almost to the length of her middle back, it was likely her father's hair color, and violet eyes. She also wears a dress that for some reason resembles a school uniform. And I believe this is Nunnally correct? Inko asked. Yes indeed this is my darling little Nunna. Mary Ann said as Nunnally blushed. Nunna why don't meet up with your husband to be and the other sister wives? Lelich said as Nunnally nods and head towards Izuku and the other women. Hello Izuku I am Nunnally by Britannia. Nunnally said as she curtsied. It's nice to meet you Nunnally Chan. Izuku said as he gave his trademarked sunshine smile. Nunnally blushed at that. Mitsuki whistled at that. Damn it Izuku those girls are getting to his pants. Kitsuki said. Um isn't it the other way around? Mitsuki asked. This is Izuku we're talking about. Kitsuki said as if he stated the most obvious thing in the world. Okay you got a point Brad. Mitsuki said as a portal opened up. As three people came out of it. The first person was a young boy with green shoulder-length hair which was braided on the sides and green eyes. He wore a purple outfit with white boots and a blue mantle, as well as a large headdress. He also carried a golden scepter with a blue orb attached to it. The second person was a round, middle-aged man with light skin, gray hair, dark yellow eyes, and a long white beard that extends down to his abdomen. 
He often sports a sinister toothy grin whenever he is plotting something nefarious. He wears a pair of brown boots, a dark green shirt, a belt below his belly and short pants which are also dark green, and a grey coat with some hair of an animal around his neck, resembling a bourgeois. The third person was a tall, beautiful, and slender woman with long, light blue hair and blue eyes and porcelain white skin. She wore a general's apparel with long sleeves with buttons on the upper arms, a blue scarf on her neck, and high-heeled boots. She also has a tattoo on her dot. Oh Mr. Igor are we late? The young boy asked. Not at all Orkate. Igor said. I'm glad honest with me, as Deeth come we need to meet your new husband. Kate said happily. Yes my lord. Honest said. Of course my emperor. The now named Ezdith walked with him. Oh um and you are? Inko asked. I am Kate yo emperor of the Isan empire. You played poker with me and my prime minister honest a few years back. Kate said. Oh you were the little boy I saw with a large man that I'd assume was honest right? Inko said as she asked that last to which honest confirmed. Indeed as per the terms of the bed of the poker match we present to you and your son. 10,000 imperial gold coins, the Tigu. Lark de la Flamme Saint and the hand of General Ezdith part is in marriage. Honest said as Emperor Kate gave Izuku the box containing said bow. Izuku took the box and bowed at Emperor Kate as he looked at Ezdith. Hello, Ezdith san. Izuku said as Ezdith looked at him. Well you are adorable so that counts for something, but maybe with some time you can strong. Ezdith said with a small smile as Izuku blushed. Maybe as strong as me. Ezdith thought. Wonderful lady Ezdith hopefully the marriage will be long and prosperous and with many children. Kate said making both Ezdith and Inko smile and Izuku go red. Itsuki took one look at Honest and Ezdith, and he didn't like them. Honest was well if you look up the word scumbag or in the dictionary you'd find his photo next to it as for Ezdith, every ink part of his body was telling him to turn the other way, while well, singing this shit I'm out. Ezdith looked at Kitsuki and gave him a smile. This caused him to back away a bit. Itsuki breathed a sigh of relief as another portal opened. This time two people came out of it. The first is a petite woman, commonly mistaken for being much younger than she really is. She has an adolescent face with emerald green eyes and green hair that naturally curls up on the ends. She wears a form-fitting black dress with long sleeves and four high-cut leg slits that show off her legs and low-heeled black shoes. The second is a young woman with a tall, slim, and curvaceous figure. She has chin-length, dark green hair styled into a bob, and her eyes are light green. Her main attire consists of a long white fur coat, a dark green form-fitting dress, thigh-high black boots and several necklaces. Yubuki is this the right place? The smaller woman said. Yes this is indeed a Tatsumaki Wani Sama. Fubuki said. Alright then let's get this over with, who is Izuku Midoriya? Tatsumaki asked demanded. That's me miss are you dot Izuku started too until Tatsumaki interrupted him. No, that would be my little sis over there. Tatsumaki said as she jabs her thumb at Fubuki. Um hi I kinda played poker against your mom. Fubuki said. And lost like a dumb Tatsumaki stated. So now I'm your bride to be I hope you can take care of me little man. Fubuki said as Izuku blushed. It's nice to meet you Fubuki-chan. Izuku said. Ah you're a cutie. Fubuki said as Tatsumaki rolled his eyes. Either way kid make my sister sad or I'll kill you. Tatsumaki said as Inko glared at her. Okay. Izuku said as another portal opens up. But Kane was a woman. She was a tall and beautiful woman she had a bountiful bust and rear, bronze skin, amber eyes, long black hair and pointed ears like that of an elf. She is wearing an extremely revealing purple top with matching leggings, a black thong and a large black cape with a red interior, she is also holding a staff in her hand and a crown on her head. Every male, except Igor, went nuclear while every female, except the Velvet Twins, glared at her jealously. God's damn it Olga. Igor said as he snapped his fingers making Olga clothing that covers her body more thoroughly. Igor I see that this world deems my state of dress inappropriate. The now named Olga asked. Yes Olga it is. Igor bluntly said as Olga nods. She then looks at Izuku. I suppose he will do and it helps that he doesn't look at me with lust like every other man. Ariga said as she noticed that Izuku was trying to look at only her eyes. I I I I it's n n n n niki e t t 2 o me to Olga san. Izuku as he looks at her eyes. She chuckles at Izuku. I am Olga Discordia, the queen of Gran, lady of the Druchi and your bride to be. Olga said with a prideful smile. Another portal opens up and out comes another person. This person has the appearance of a girl with pale skin. She is described as a cute girl with long, dark purple hair and sleepy golden eyes. Her hair is tied in a long braid by a bow with a purple skull, reaching all the way down to her hips. She also has three black markings on both her thighs, also having gold neon lines in its interior. She wears a white skull mask in conjunction with her Grim Reaper clothing, which consists of a light blue dress and a black and white hood resembling a jester cap with an emerald gem at the tip. She also wears black elbow-length gloves covered in gold neon lines with gems at the back of her wrists. 
Hey there I'm Benia Orcas the daughter of the Grim Reaper, and all that so which one of you is Izuku? Benia asks as Izuku raised his hand and then looks at Inko. Mom did you played poker with death itself and won. Izuku said as he looks at his mother with a flat look on his face. Um yes I think I did. Inko said as she rubs the back of her head. Mitsuki and Mitsuki both looked at each other and thought the same thing. Yeah I got nothing. Kitsuki and Mitsuki thought at the same time. Well it's not too bad though to be fair your mother and one other player were the only ones who played fair. Benia said with a shrug. Um Benia, I have to ask who the other player that played fair was. Izuku asked as a giant golden gate appeared. Two people came out of the gate. One was a figure of beauty she has porcelain skin, black hair that resembles a moonless sky, beautiful blue eyes that make sapphires look like cheap rocks, a bountiful bust, and shapely rear end, dressed in a pure white silk robe, and on her back are two giant white wings. And next to her was the pre-quirk actor Morgan Freeman in a white suit and pants. Oh wow. Was all Izuku can't say about the girl in front of him. Um isn't that guy supposed to be dead? Mitsuki said as she pointed at Morgan Freeman. Mitsuki racked all of his brain power to find out why the hell a pre-quirk actor is here with a literal angel. It took Mitsuki a few minutes to find out, and he was shocked, but he needed to confirm it. Um sir who are you? Mitsuki asked as Morgan Freeman. Chuckled. Eh hey, I am who I am. Morgan Freeman. Simply said. That pretty much made everything click into place. Kitsuki turned his head towards Inko and said. Auntie did you play poker with I don't know God with a in capital G and one. Kitsuki said as he shouted the last part. God simply chuckled at Kitsuki's reaction as everyone else was speechless. Now then Izuku I'd like for you to meet Anil. God said. Hello there my beloved husband. Anil said. I can assure you that Anil can defend her quite well as she is strong as one of the four seraphs. God said with a smile. Oh thank you so much. Inko said. Well I was going to give you Anil anyway because I got drunk while making your soul. God said with a blush. The silence is the Midorias and the Bakugos. What? Izuku said. You were supposed to receive the pyrokinesis quirk on your fourth birthday, but by the time I noticed the missing quirk it was already too late, and I apologize. God said ashamed at what he did. Um my lord aren't supposed to be perfect. Nunnally nervously asked as she like the rest of Britannia she was a Christian. So to God, himself saying that he was imperfect was mind-blowing to say the least. I based humanity off myself that means I'm like the rest of them I'm not perfect, but I try my best. God said. Um may I say a few words, but before that anti Mitsuki, catch and hold down my mother with you. Izuku said as the Bakugos did just that. First off I'm truly grateful that you find me worthy marrying your daughter's friends. Second I'm very pissed off at you God. Izuku said as God shrugged his shoulders knowing full well that it was his fault. I can't believe he just told off the Lord. Marianne said. And from the looks of it the Lord agrees that it was his fault. Lelich said. Third I honestly think all could have done better than little old quirkless me all of you are truly beautiful, and any man would love to marry and love you. Izuku said making the girls blush. And just like we find another reason to give him a chance. All the brides to be thought. And finally I think it's time for me to faint as I should have done. Izuku said as he takes out his phone to see what time it is. 45 minutes ago so please go on ahead and order some food while I lay down unconscious. So if it's not too much to ask can someone rest my head on one of my bride to be's lap would be appreciated. Izuku stated as he faints. Everyone in the room blinked and were surprised at this. Echako took the chance to give Izuku a lap pillow. Everyone else simply wondered what they should do now. So who does anyone have a menu I'm kind of hungry? Cerebella asked. I think some food would be wonderful. Honest said. Izuku was starting to wake up and seize Katsuki. Oh Kachin you're here I just had a weird dream that mom got me wedding contracts with various women. Izuku said as he rubbed his forehead. It isn't a dream Izuku you're sleeping on round face's lap. Katsuki said as he points out the fact that he's resting his head on Ichako's lap. Izuku goes red and gets off and sits down, though he didn't notice the pout she has. Um hi. Izuku said as Katsuki fasipums. Hey there Izuku you okay? Kayoka asked. A bit I'm still in shock about all this. Izuku said still nervous about this. That's putting it mildly dude. Kayoka said with a snort. At least you're alright Izuku. Florence said as she examined Izuku. Um well since we're here how about we get to know each other. Izuku said. I guess we can do that, I'll go first. Achako said. Go right ahead. I've already explained my origins and you look it up via the internet. Florence said with a shrug. Anywho as you all know I'm Yuraka Achako and well my dad made that stupid bed. Kayoka snorts at this. And here I am being your wife um I do have a few dreams. Achako said. Oh what are those dreams? Izuku asked. Um being a pro hero to support my parents and send them to Hawaii for when they retire. Though that may be hard since my parents are dirt poor which is weird since they work a construction. Achako said with a determined smile. Okay that is weird. 
Himiko said. I might make it easier for you Achako-chan you see one of the thing my mom won is land on Hawaii. Izuku said to which Achako gasped, really? Achako asked as Izuku nods. Thank you so much love. Achako said as she hugged Izuku. Thus promise me that you'll continue your dream to be a pro hero, also what's your quirk? Izuku said wondering what Achako's quirk is. Oh right my quirk is zero gravity with it, I can remove an object or a person's gravity making them float, but if I use it too long I vomit and for some reason it's rainbow colored. Achako said. As Deeth raised an eyebrow at the weakness of her quirk. Izuku gave her a gigawatt smile and pulled out a notebook from out of nowhere and started writing about how to improve it, what support gear to use and so on. Well both Olga and Hinoka wonder about one thing. What the hell is gravity? Hinoka and Olga thought. Izuku soon realized what he was doing and blushes. Sorry but I like studying about quirks. Izuku said as he rubs the back of his head. It's okay sweetie. Achako said with a sweat drop as her husband explained himself. Husband they're not even married and she's already calling Izuku her husband. Achako blushed for a bit and smiled. Oh I also like Machi. Achako said still blushing. Thanks Acha it's my turn. I'm Toga Himiko and well she started to say until she stops. Um I'm sorry to ask but I kinda need a bit of blood. Himiko asked. Everyone but Izuku got scared a bit. Is it related to your quirk? Izuku asked as Himiko nods. Yes my quirk blood form allows me to transform into the person of the blood I ingest and recently I'm able to use that person's quirk and I'm immune to all blood transmitted diseases. Himiko said. I'm guessing you go into a blood frenzy if you don't get any. Katsuki said. Yeah I do. Himiko said quietly as she started to tear up. Florence do you have a syringe? Izuku asked as Florence nods. She opens her medical bag and takes out a tourniquet and an empty syringe she puts the tourniquet on Izuku and after feeling for a vein and putting a bit of rubbing alcohol in place, she sticks the syringe into Izuku and proceeds to remove some blood. After removing the syringe and the needle, with Carolyn destroying it with a fiery spell and bandaging the wound. Florence presents the blood-filled syringe to Himiko. Izuku is this your dot Himiko started to until Izuku interrupted her. I'd be a very bad husband if I didn't help one of wives. Izuku said with a smile as Himiko take the blood-filled syringe and drinks the blood. Once all of the blood was consumed Himiko smiled and had a small blush on her face. Yum it tasted like cinnamon, I love it Izuku. Himiko said still smiling. Uwak it's my turn I may Hatsum, and my dream is to build support gear company and supply the best support gear of all Japan and the world. Mei said. Katsuki smirked at this. Awesome oi. Izuku she makes our gear. Katsuki said with a manic grin. Of course Katsuki in fact may I have some idea for some support gear for me and Katsuki. Izuku said as he passed May a pair of notebooks. May takes the notebooks and gives them a look. I'm not bad, but I think I can do better and improve them even further. May said with a smile. May was in reality was very impressed with Izuku's notes and hopes that he doesn't go to UA's support course. Oh one last thing my quirk is zoom as the name implies I can see zoom in at long distances and see small objects I just use it to help inventing. May said. I guess I'm next I'm Kyoka Jiro and well I like making and listening to music and I want to be a pro hero and my quirk is well my earphone jacks, I can use them as extra limbs and I can send my heartbeat through them, I'm also no slouch with a sword. Jiro said as Izuku writes about Jiro and her quirk. Jiro that's wonderful I hope we can work together as heroes. Izuku said. So um I have to ask is a tree or quirkless? Jiro asked as Katsuki fascipumed. Earlobes god with a in capital G, confirmed a dumbass, and even admitted to being at fault for Izuku not having one. Katsuki said. Oh right I forgot god himself said that himself. Kayoka said with a blush. It was at that moment that Carolyn and Justine spoke up. I think we'll go next right Justine? Carolyn said. A good idea Carolyn. Justine said with a nod. Now as you all might have saw we are not of this world Justine and I are from another dimension. Carolyn said. Specifically we reside in a dimension called the Velvet Room, a room between dream and reality, mind and matter, the consciousness and subconsciousness. Though oddly enough it is also connected to a similar Japan though everyone there is quirkless. Justine said as she let the info be absorbed. Holy shit. Katsuki simply said. Wow that's amazing. Izuku simply said. Okay hang on to your butts because our origin is a bit complex. Carolyn said. All questions regarding our origins will be answered after we explain it okay. Justine said as everyone nods. Okay first off the Velvet family is tasked with helping certain people called wild cards, these guys start off as strong as quirkless humans, but after a year's time they become strong to destroy gods, yes you heard me right gods. Carolyn said with a smile. The Velvet family has helped humanity five times the first two times it was just our uncle Igor and our father Philemon who helped them, but it was during the third time is where the second daughter Elizabeth and the only son Theodore joined in to help humanity. 
Justine said. Yeah they succeeded though not without loss to third wild card Minato Arisato sacrificed his life to maintain the Great Seal, which prevents Earbus from reaching Nyx, Elizabeth is still trying to bring him back. Carolyn said as her voice became a little somber. The true hero. Izuku whispered. Okay with the fourth wild card Yunarakami who was helped her eldest sister Margaret, he led an investigation team against a serial killer and successfully capture him, he also faced Izanami no Makoto and defeated her. Justine said. Not to mention he has a harem with Margaret, a girl named Marie, an inn manager called Yukiko and an idol named Dries. Carolyn said with a smirk. Dustine sighs at Carolyn remark. Wild cards are also known to get harems with those they have bonded with, and to this day, we don't why and how. Justine said. Anyway the fifth wild card is Cole and Amamiya is the wild card we had to help, but he didn't get the best luck you see he saved a young woman, but it turns out the man that tried to assault her was a politician, and he got booted to Tokyo and was given an assault charge. Carolyn said shocking the group and pissing off Katsuki. Okay then now you need to know that we used to be a singular being known as Lavenza, however I guess you could say a villain called Yaldabe have captured Lavenza and used a powerful magic to split us into what you see and erasing our memories. Justine said. At least it was until Ren snapped us out of it when he told us that he was marrying Lavenza and got us back together. Carolyn said. Our father Igor made us after that to help Ren and his harem on his quest. Justine said. Soon Ren formed the vigilante group called the Phantom Thieves of Hearts, which started from simply stopping a rapist volleyball couch to stopping to the very politician that slapped the assault charge on Ren in the first place. Carolyn said. He also destroyed Yaldabaoth as well. Justine said with a smile. Oh Ren officially married his harem and got Lavenza pregnant. Carolyn said. So any questions? Justine asked as everyone but Izuku raised their hands. The Velvet Twins sweat dropped at this. After a while the twins grew tired of the questions and noticed that Izuku never asked a question. Say Izuku you haven't asked a question. Justine said with a tilt of her head. Yeah what gives? Carolyn asked. Um I don't feel worthy of marrying you too, since your family had helped humanity, and dot Izuku said before the twins interrupted him. You're worthy, but you just need time to better yourself. Justine said. Yeah you idiot and we'll help you along the way, but we won't be able to help the usual way, but we will help. Carolyn said with a small blush on her cheeks. Thanks you too, oh and congratulations on becoming ants. Izuku with his trademark smile causing the twins to blush. The others gave the congratulations as well. Well then as you know I'm Hashido Hinoka now I don't have a lineage of helping humanity, but I do have a lineage of being related to the Dragons of Dawn, I have a large family, and I'm also commander of the Pegasus Kai Knights. Hinoka said. Pegasus as in the shiny horses with wings. Kitsuki asked. Yes, Kitsuki. Hinoka said annoyed at Kitsuki for disregarding the Sky Knights. Wow um do think I could get lessons on how to ride one? Izuku asked. Sure Izuku-kun it will take time, and I'm sure Takumi will give you some lessons on the Yumi since well you have one. Hinoka said. Of course Hinoka-chan. Izuku said. Say what your family like? Achako asked. Of course well you already met my brothers Ryoma and Takumi, and my little sister Sakura. My father Sumeragi and my birth mother Ikona both passed away. Before my father passed away he adopted a young girl named Azura and married a woman named Mikoto, she also had a pair of twins named Korin and Kamui. Hinoka said as she said the last part in a somber tone. What happened to them? Izuku asked. They were kidnapped by the kingdom of Noor, and I can't do anything about since it would only cause war. Hinoka said as she started to cry. Izuku hugged her and calmed her down. Hinoka wiped the tears out of her eyes. Thank you Inada. Hinoka said with a smile and a blush. Of course Hinoka-chan. Izuku said with a smile. Okay then my turn Izuku, as you all know I'm Cirabella I have no last name yet, and well, I don't know much about my past, other than that my weapon best friend vice versa is an heirloom, other than that I unknowingly worked for the Medici Mafia as an enforcer, since they were the ones that raised me if it wasn't for my friends both old and new, I would have never escaped the Medicis and destroyed the Skullheart. Cirabella said. So besides the Medicis thing what did you do for a living? Izuku asked. I was an acrobat and a backup strongwoman at the Cirque de Carts. Cerebella said. Circus of Cards? Carolyn asked with a raised eyebrow. Yeah, but it was also a front for the Medicis to find enforcers and well, Cerebella nervously said as she rubbed the back of her head. I would love to see you preform Seer Chan. Izuku said. Thank Izzy. Cerebella said. I would go next but as I said you can most of the info about me at the internet, so I'll pass the introductions to Nunnally. Florence said with a shrug. Thank you Florence. For my introduction is quite simple like Hinoka I too am of royalty, as I am 87th Imperial Princess of the Holy Britannian Empire. Nunnally said. Um I have to ask Nunnally how big is the Britannian Empire? Esdith asked curious of Nunnally's empire. Well since this world is similar to our Earth we control a third of the world. 
which includes the Americas, the Caribbean Canada, Britain itself, some parts of Europe India, some parts of the Middle East Australia and Hong Kong. Nenali said. As Deeth's eyes went wide as did the others. Um what's the status of Japan? Izuku asked. Oh there are allies along with Russia, and both waiting for the day the Chinese Federation attacks. Nenali said. Oh okay. Izuku said and breathed a sigh of relief. Along with all the other Japanese and Hashidian in the room. Anyway I hope that I can be a good bride oh one more thing my father wants to present you with a powerful gift at the homeland and to meet the other brides. Nenali said with a smile. Welp you're at Deku. Katsuki said. Gee thanks Kachin. Izuku sarcastically said with a flat look on his face. Is there something wrong Izuku? Nenali asked. Oh nothing Nunachan. Izuku said with a smile. Anyway love I will go next. Ezdith said. Of course Ezdith chan Izuku said. My start is a bit more humble I used to be part of a Namada clan called the Partas clan, but after a raid against my clan, I am the sole survivor. Ezdith said. Oh Ezdith you have my condolences. Izuku said as did the others. Thank you Izuku, but I've grown past that. Ezdith said with a smile. Oh good cause as long you live you carry hope and legacy of the Partas clan. Izuku said. Oh that does it the first chance I get I'm turning him into a man. Ezdith thought as lewd thoughts went to Ezdith's mind. Thank you Izuku you know many would see you as weak, but after I and the others are done with you, even this all might person I keep hearing about will fall to your might. Ezdith said. Wow thank you Ezdith though he probably retire before that happens, as no matter how strong someone is time and death absolute. Izuku said. I can confirm the former the latter not so much. Benia said. I'll go next then I'm Fubuki, and well my start was not good in any sense of the word. My sister and I got placed into a research facility the moment we got our powers. Their goal was to make us stronger and to make us obedient, but it didn't go as planned as you can see. We did get stronger especially Tatsumaki Wani-sama, and she got us out of there and destroyed the facility soon we became heroes. Yubuki said. Is it like here? Izuku asked. Yubuki made a so-so motion with her hand. More or less but with more giant monster attacks and alien invasions. Anyway after we became heroes my big sis flew solo while I made a hero team, but Tatsumi-chan didn't like and thought it made me weak, until she met her Yubarok boyfriend, that taught her that it's okay to ask for help. Fubuki said as a small rock hit her in the back of her head. Tatama is oh it you're right I like him alright, and you're not wrong about him being Yubarok. Tatsumaki said. Yeah so that's our story since I'll be living here I'll have to start a new career. Fubuki said. Um you can always take the national hero exam to get your license. Izuku said. I think I might just do that though I think the only challenge is from All Might, since he's like a watered down Satama. Fubuki said with a smile. It is my turn. Where I come from is a land called Estoya, and it is not a peaceful place. To put it bluntly you're very likely to be raped at that horrid land, and Gran is no better, but we manage it. Olga said as she gauged the others. The women were obviously both angry and sick Katsuki wanted to blow something up, and Izuku was dead silent. Until he looked at Olga with a grim face filled with righteous fury. Izuku was not happy if there's one thing i don't like it's rape and i will personally kill all of those who commit it i will hang them from their balls and turn them all into eunuchs so that they can never commit such acts again izuku said making olga smile and ezdith blush like a schoolgirl i'm sure that your hero work will contain some of this olga said i know that's why i'll train to become a greater hero than all might izuku said well then i will say this though you are definitely an improvement to the men of estoya olga said it's because Izukan doesn't see you as a piece of meat. Himiko said as Olga gave a look that said gee you think. This did make the atmosphere a bit lighter with Himiko's words. Anything else I should know about Gran? Izuku asked. Yes I've adopted a half-elf named Chloe. Olga asked. Oh that does she hates humans doesn't she? Izuku said. Yes and I forgot to mention slavery does exist, but only the nobles of Estoya get them, and it's mostly Drichi. Chloe used to be a slave to her father. Olga said as she let the info sink in. Nodding damn it. Izuku said as he pinched the bridge of his nose. I heard that Izuku though I don't blame you for saying that. God said. And due to how Estoya is Izuku said as he left it at that. Olga nodded confirming Izuku's suspicions. Anuo let's get to my intro. Benia said as she changes the subject. Thankfully everyone went ahead with Benia idea. Well then I'm Benia Orcus, and I'm the daughter of death himself and well, there was not much to say about it, mom used to be a human, and met dad after she died, they fell in love and yada yada either way mom and dad wanted to have a vacation to Vegas, and well, you all know what happened. Benia said. Yeah I know. Izuku said with a sweat drop. But well dad did say if he had a choice between giving me away to you or paperwork he would always chose the former. Benia said. Death has paperwork. Kyoka asked with a raised eyebrow. The up and even god has paperwork. Benia said with a shudder. 
I can confirm that father hates it with all his heart, and both Satan and Lucifer both agreed that paperwork was an evil that they did not want to inflict on even the worst of the sinners. Anil said as everyone went wide eye. Damn God, Satan and death hate paperwork. Kyoka said. Well then Anil it's your turn. Achako said as Anil nods. Of course like Benia there's not much about me, but I know I will always be loyal to you Izuku. Anil said. Thank you Anil. Izuku said with a smile. Any will love father has another gift for you. Anil said as she takes out a box. Oh what's in the box Anil? Izuku asked. As you know my father was supposed to give you a pyrokinesis quirk, but couldn't, so he have to give the quirk to someone else, but what he didn't told, was that another angel told him he could have given the quirk to you at any other time. Anil said. Oh my dot Izuku started to say until Anil interrupted him. Please Izuku allow me to finish. Now father was quite flushed since as I stated earlier, he had already gave the quirk to someone else, but either way to make a long story short within this box, is a powerful telekinetic quirk with it, you'll get the power you oh so deserved. Anil said. Um wow I just wow. Izuku said as he tries to comprehend what he was just told. It was at that moment a waiter with a tray of food came by. Oh the food's here. Justine said. Finally I'm starving. Carolyn said. But oh Izuku I've ordered for you, but I didn't know what you like so I ordered you some katsudan. Achako said. Thank you Achako. Izuku said as he got out of his stupor and gave her smile. And just like that round face is going to be the head girl of the harem. Kitsuki said. At that comment the other wives looked at Kitsuki. Katsudan is his favorite meal, and his mom makes the best katsudan in the damn world. Kitsuki said with a grin. The other wives looked at each other and thought to themselves. We need to make katsudan for Izuku. The other wives thought to themselves. All of them wanted the position of head wife. Um thank you Achako-chan. And thank you all for helping me. Izuku said. At that the wives blushed. Well I might as well tell you guys about me. My mom and dad divorced after I turned four and found out I was quirkless and well Kitsuki used to be my bully until his uncle forced him into both military school and therapy to make him realize he was being an Izuku said as Kitsuki said nodding, confirming what Izuku said. Um I know this make it something a broken record, but I've heard about some shit about the quirkless. Kayoka asked. Izuku just gave a flat look. Oh no is it that bad? Himiko asked. Yeah the teachers encourage bullying, people will refuse me services, crushes I've had would embarrass me in front of the school, they'd stay away from my birthdays, and people would leaving me vise as red spider lilies with notes to kill myself. Izuku said. The wives looked at Izuku with horror. The chakal looked mad and mutter about putting people into the sun. The Miko grabbed her steak knife looking quite murderous. May started making plans for something called Murder Baby MK1. Ioka earphone jack slithered like cobras ready to lunge at someone. Both Carolyn and Justine wanted to chuck Metagolians at all of the people that hurt their husband. Anoka wanted to skewer some people with her spear. Cerebella wants to break soul eggs for once her training as a Medici enforcer would do the world some good. Florence had a few ways to hurt people, since she's a nurse herself. Nunnally wonder if she convinced Cordelia or her mother for nightmare lessons to defend her husband. Esdith wonder if there was new method of tortures for her husband's tormentors, she saw her husband's strength for simply taking it and defies them by just living. Yubuki Powers was making the utensils float and getting angry. Olga made a book appeared and wondered what kind of curses to inflict them. Benia looked torn between avenging her husband or making her dad getting more paperwork until she got a text from her dad telling her to go nuts to which she sharpened her side. Anil indulged in the sin of wrath for a bit and her wings darkened a bit but soon went back to white. Izuku what happened to you is not okay. Achako said. Yeah I could easily kill them and they would never know. Himiko said. Yeah hubby I will totally help you and love you. May said. Seriously dude this is not cool, but I say them. Kyoka said. We'll make sure you get the help you need in fact if I recall we can teach you magic. Carolyn said with a smirk. Indeed love perhaps we'll even teach you how to make some good coffee and curry. Justine said with a smile. Anada I will defend your honor as your bride. Hinoka said with a smile. Yeah I plan to crack some of their skulls and without vice versa. Cerebella said as vice versa poked her a bit. Okay okay vice versa you'll crack some skulls as well. Cerebella said as vice versa gave a thumbs up. Izuku I will help you heal physically, mentally and spiritually, that is my duty as both a nurse and a wife. Florin said. Izuku I will always support you love. Nunnally said. You show great strength Izuku you defy all of the people who abused you by just living, and that makes me giddy. Esdith said. Izu I hope I can be a good bride to you, since you need a cutie. Fubuki said. Well Izuku I hope to live a full life and say you to the of your life except for Katsuki. Benia said as Katsuki shrugs not denying what he did in the past. Izuku I think what they're saying is that you can be a hero no matter what anybody says. Anil said with a small smile. 
Izuku was touched no one, and he meant no one ever supported him on his dream, not even his mother supported his dream, but she did it to protect him, so he forgave about that. But now he has the support of his new wives, and now he feels like he can become a hero. Thank you everyone I swear that I'll be the best husband and hero I can be. Izuku said with a determined smile and a blush on his cheek. So are we going to eat or what? Katsuki asked. Izuku, his wives and Katsuki ate their food happily. It was five years since Izuku met his wives, and if he hadn't he would have never had any confidence in his life well he probably would have met most of them later in his life and not having the confidence to see them. But either way he loves his wives. Since then he had managed to learn a lot. He also married them in the courthouse wedding, and those going to collage vowed to have a celebration before they went to UA University, those not going are having celebrations in other times. Well except as Deeth she wanted to go on a hunting trip, just her and Izuku sort of like a honeymoon, they had found a world where giant monsters were thing, and they used their parts for weapons and armor. As Deeth commented on how the Prada's clan would have thrived there. They slayed a dragon that for some reason gave him Buddha vibes. Especially with his new lance infinite wisdom, he also has a new rifle fading blossom and a sword radiant flow. He plans on giving that blade to Kyoka. Anyway he was still learning how to use infinite wisdom thanks to Hinoka. She is also teaching him how to ride a Pajisi. In fact during those five years he had learned a lot from his wives. First thing he did was using the stone that contained the telekinetic quirk. Carolyn and Justine taught him magic yes magic is unbelievable as it sounds he was able to use it. He was able to use healing, support, less, light magic, psychokinetic and for some reason curse, dark magic, magic. Anil helped him with the bless, healing and support magic, while Olga with dark magic and taught him how to make potions. Benia taught him some lifestyle magic i.e. hammerspace magic and teleportation magic. The latter was obvious the former was a storage magic. Yubuki and his mother taught him how to use his new telekinetic quirk properly. Nunley taught him how to spot those who spread falsehood and etiquette and strategies. Her father gave him a giant robot, but that's another story for another time. Florence taught him medicine, first aid and how to use guns. Cirabella taught him hand-to-hand -hand combat and acrobatics. Amiko taught him how to act something that she was very good at along with stealth when she is not studying at UA Yuna's hero coursework. Mei taught him how to maintain support gear, while Lichako gave him knowledge how to finance. Ayoka taught him how to play instruments and got him started on swordsmanship. Now he was at Eldera High School writing about a new pro hero Mount Lady. It was then Katsuki shouted. Ha! Don't compare me and Izuku to the rest of you potential D-lister sidekicks we're headed towards UA University. Katsuki said with a smirk. Katsuki showing off was no surprise at all, since both of them aced the mock exam. Everyone else was shouting about how UAU was impossible to get in, and so on and so forth. After that happened both he and Izuku went their separate ways. See you catch and say hi to your harem for me. Izuku said. Yeah yeah Deku, Kami and Momo say hi as well. Bakugo said as went his way. Oh that's right Katsuki has a harem now his mother got it for him and he was not happy. Katsuki wanted to wait until after college to get a girlfriend and then wife, but then his ing hag just had to get ing grandbaby fever, Katsuki words not his, but he relented and got to know them, and began to like them. Katsuki harem consisted of several girls two of them were from their world. The first is Kami Atsushimi and the second Momo Yaoi Rozu. All of the others are from other worlds. The third was Marianne Von Edmund. She was from a land of Fodland specifically from Leicester Alliance she was a bit shy and seemed to hiding something, but Katsuki said that it's been taken care of. She also has a sword on her hip. The fourth was very surprising was Korin, Hinoka's sister, although she and her twin brother Kamui now have taken the surname Vala. To make a super long story short she and Kamui are the rulers of a nation called Vala. Either way the fifth of Katsuki's harem is Makoto Rindo, she came from a world where martial arts were a fact of life. She and her family practice a form of karate called Rindo Kansas Karate Makoto's father, told to start a branch of the dojo in Katsuki, and vows to do so. Katsuki likes her determination and the fact that she can go toe-to-toe -to -toe against him, even though she quirkless in fact she hates it when Katsuki holds back telling him to stop sandbagging her. The sixth was Kukaku Shiba she was like a younger Mitsuki only a bit calmer and wiser, she and her little brother Ganju now live with Katsuki's home as she sells fireworks for festivals and birthdays. She looks like she likes Katsuki. The seventh was somewhat odd, and the reason was that she was 28, a widow and a mother. Her name is Katleya, and her son's name is Rana. When they met she was afraid that Katsuki wouldn't like her son, but Katsuki surprised her by saying. You did good on keeping an eye on your mom. In the end Katleya, Rana and Katsuki got along well, while the other girls in Katsuki's harem were both envied and pitied Katleya for her giant boobs. 
The eighth was an alien princess her name was Asami Jurai, and to be blunt, she was ing adorable she nice, kind, cooks really well, and she's the only one to make Kitsuki not curse in fact, Mitsuki used to use her as an anti-curse shield until Sasami told her to stop that. All in all everyone likes her. Now the ninth and final member of Kitsuki Harem Richnera Erichnera is an actual Arachn, and not someone with a spider quirk she's mature but a bit lazy and originally didn't like humans, but over time her hate somewhat went away. She also gets drunk on coffee. Kitsuki matched well, but he is adamant about getting married after college. His girls are fine with that. Izuku was now taking a shortcut due to Mount Lady wrecking the train lines. Izuku was walking through an alley when a man made of slime came out from the sewers. Yes. A mid-size cloak, don't move Brad it will only take a moment. The slime villain said as he tries to kill Izuku. Izuku tries to gasp for breath he thought he would die until he remembers his magic. Izuku began to charge his curse magic on his hand, the slime villain noticed. How oh, what the hell? The slime villain wondered as Izuku shouted. I gain. Izuku shouted as he blasted the slime villain scattering his body everywhere. Izuku breathes after that happened. It was at that moment the man bursts opens to reveal a man. The man has equally muscular and well-defined physique, his design resembling a typical western comic book superhero. He has short blonde hair, swept backwards, with two distinct tufts that stick up above his head, leaning slightly to each side, which often casts a dark shadow over his face, hiding everything but his bright blue eyes. He is dressed in a white shirt, greens pants and a pair of brown shoes. Have no o. Oh. The man said as he see the scattered slime. Izuku turns around to see the man and is shocked. Oh my god it's all might. Izuku mumbled as he fainted. Well that happened. All Might said as he sweet dripped. Some time later, Izuku woke after a while and sees All Might picking up the remains of the slime villain. All Might. Can I dot Izuku started to say until he sees an autograph of All Might in his notebook taking up two pages. Oh young man I'm glad to see you're alright. All Might said. I'm okay All Might I had to use my quirk to stop him. Izuku said. Don't worry young man new laws make so that quirks can be used for self-defense, so you're safe from repercussions. All Might said. Izuku sighs in relief. Now then I have to take this villain to the police so with that farewell. All Might said as he leaps away. Izuku felt like this day couldn't get any better. Buzz. Izuku felt his phone buzzed and he answers it. To see that Fubuki had sent him a photo. He reveals that the photo was of Fubuki in a dark green lingerie. Yeah this day just got better. Two months later, it had been two months since he had gotten All Might's autograph he was now in Moe's Aisley Diner on a date with his first bride and head of the harem Midoriya Chako. He was and still is amazed him at how Achako became head of the harem. Achako made all of the rules of the harem especially the financial ones. One rule that she did established was that until they were ready to face the world i.e. become professional heroes or obtain stable careers, as they would stick to their maiden names in public and only speak their true surnames in private. Itsuki made this rule for his harem as well. Another rule was that the older members of the harem can wear their rings, but the younger ones cannot for safety reasons and when asked say one of two phrases. No commenter I will not reveal my spouse publicly nor their surname for safety reasons. Some of the younger brides complained about but accepted the terms. And the biggest rule revolved around babies as previously stated the older members can get pregnant but not the younger ones and absolutely no information about their kids were to be revealed in any shape or form other than legal documents, Chloe was the sole exception since she had been previously adopted by Ariga before marrying Izuku. Izuku and Achako were enjoying themselves until they saw a little girl was running in fear. The girl has bluish off-white hair, messy and unkempt, which is parted in the middle of her forehead, almost reaching down to her waist. She has very wide, innocent-looking eyes, which are bright red in color. Poking out from the right side of her forehead is a small, brown horn, which grows larger when her quirk is activated. She's wearing a plain, short-sleeved dress, which is a dirty pale tan color. Bandages are wrapped around both her arms and legs, stopping at her wrists and ankles, underneath which she is shown to have numerous scars. Izuku look I think that girl is in trouble. Achako said as the girl hides under a dumpster. It was at that moment they saw a scary person. Said person is a pale man of narrow build with short shaggy auburn hair, parted to the right. His eyes are thin, there are eyes as small and gold, with rather long lower eyelashes and small eyebrows. He is wearing a black dress shirt with matching dress pants, a pale grey tie around his neck and a belt with a long thin buckle around his waist, with three beaded lobe piercings in his left ear. Over this, he wears a dark olive green bomber jacket, its collar lined with thick purple fur and white lace-up sneakers, their soles tan colored, with no socks on his feet. His most noticeable features are the white surgical gloves he wears on his hands and the magenta plague mask he wears over his mouth, which is tipped and embroidered with gold. Where is she? The pale man said. We don't know boss. Another man said. The pale man growled a bit but stopped. Find her and if you don't you're dead. 
the pale man said as the other guy nods. The both of them run off. The Midoriyas soon leave the diner, after paying of course, and went to the dumpster and looks under it. Hey are you okay? Achako asked in a soft tone. The little girl shivered and tried to get away. Izuku got close and spoke. Hey there's no need to be afraid she's nice. Izuku said as he holds out his hand. The little girl stops shaking and doesn't smile, but she takes Izuku and crawls towards him. Help me please. The girl begged. Both Midoriyas nodded and tried to go to the police. I believe you have something of mine. The pale man said. The couple turned around to see the pale man standing right behind them. Izuku sensed that he was bad news and held the girl close. I bad. The girl said as she shakes in fear. Izuku scowls as Achako presses a button on her phone. I won't ask again brats give me eerie. Kai said. Izuku responds with activating his telekinetic quirk in one hand, while hold the now named Eerie in the other. HMMP damn heroic mincet of the infected, well then now you die. Kai said as he charges towards the Midoriyas. Or would have until he was pulled back and tossed at a building. Both Izuku and Achako didn't need to wonder much on who did it, as they both knew who did it. Yubuki. Izuku shouted as Yubuki looked at him. Aizu, Acha take the girl and run as Deeth, and I will handle him. Yubuki said as the two ran with Hiri. Let's see how he stands up to us. Ezdeeth said ready to use her eyes. Damn infected bitches. Kai said as he got back. Soon a crowd began to show. Look it's Ice Storm and Ezdeeth. One guy said. The Hell Blizzard duo is here wow. Another guy said. Hell yeah they're so hot. A grape-headed goblin said. Well then Fubuki shall we give them a quick show I have to give my little one his story and tuck him in. Ezdeeth said with a sadistic grin. Of course Esti. Fubuki said with a grin of her own. DGGRRRR you two go after those kids I'll take care of these bitches, and I expect a disinfecting bath after this is said and done got it. Kai said as the other two mooks went after Izuku and the others. But Izuku and the others, Izuku, Achako and Iri are still running away from Kai's mooks. Damn it, Izuku do you have anything to stop them? Achako asked as Izuku nods. Masakunda. Izuku shouted as the spell making them slow down. What the hell? Mook 1 said as he felt sluggish. Don't worry man I'll fix it. Restore. Mook 2 said as he used his quirk to undo Izuku's spell. The Mooks continues to run after Izuku. Well damn that happened, but this should help Masaka Kaja. Izuku said as the three of them ran faster than the Mooks. But Mook 1 uses his quirk to capture Achako with light rope. Achako. Makaugain. Izuku shouted as multiple blasts of light hits the Mooks. This makes the Mooks let's go of Achako. Izuku ran towards his bride and uses his body as a shield. Damn it all. Mook 1 tries to use his quirk again only to hear. Have no fear for I am here. All Might shouted as he appeared. Oh shit it's All Might. Mooks 1 and 2 shouted in fear, knowing that they are screwed. Texas smash. All Might shouts as he punches the Mooks and knocks them out. All Might you're here. Izuku said surprised to see All Might here. Not what I expected to do on my day off, but hey it is what it is. All Might said as Achako gives him a flat look. Did you just used a centuries old TikTok. Achako said still giving the symbol of peace a flat look. Um maybe. All Might. Some time later, the Stafu Hospital, Izuku and the others are at the hospital after everything that had happened. Kai was arrested along with the Mooks. When they checked to see who Iri's parents were they found nothing. Iri not wanting to be away from Izuku and Achako wanted to stay with them. Izuku, unsurprisingly, volunteers to be Iri's guardian. This made the little cinnamon roll happy. Achako told the rest of the harem and Inko that Izuku was at the hospital unharmed. All Might was in the room with the three cinnamon rolls as he spoke with Izuku. Young man I saw that you were going to use your body to defend the young lady here what made you do that? All Might asked. Nothing my legs moved before my mind. Izuku said making All Might smile. He's the one. All Might thought. Young I have de-iced that you will be my successor. All Might said. How your successor? Really me? Izuku said shocked at this news. That's right I want you to inherit my quirk. All Might said. It took All Might a nanosecond to realize that he and Izuku weren't the only ones in the room. I'm sorry what? Achako said. It was at that moment that the door busted open to reveal Inko and the rest of Izuku's harem. All Might looked at the amount of people and asked. Did you hear everything? All Might asked as the harem and Inko nodded. Well then what else can happen now? Izuku said as All Might bursts into smoke. In place of All Might there is a very skinny man with sharp angular features and long limbs, his neck long and his eyebrows absent. Well then I knew you had to see me in this form sooner or later young Midoriya. All Might said. Yeah but before that can we an explanation on what the hell is going on here? Inko asks while she cried. Um yeah well it started when Achako and I had our date. Izuku said as he explains what happened. Izuku had explained what happened and to say that his mother and his harem was worried was an understatement considering Inko almost flooded the hospital again. All Might wondered who these women were and why are they hugging his successor. 
Um Midori is shown and can you tell me who these women are? All Might asked. Oh I guess I should introduce them, but first I need you to keep this a secret okay All Might. Izuku said as All Might shrugged. Sure you're keeping the secret about my quirk which I have yet to explain, but sure. All Might said. They're my wives All Might. Izuku said. All Might brain sort of reset, but soon came to and he said. Um I'm sorry I must misheard, but you these women are your wives. All Might said. Well except Iri and my mother Inko. Izuku said as he points at the two. Still 15 wives I can see why you want to keep this under wraps. All Might said still shocked at this. Should I introduce them? Izuku asked as All Might nods. Preferably their first names since I'm guessing you did a civil service so that you can use the Midoriya surname. All Might said as Izuku's harem nods. Midoriya Achako. Achako said with smile. Midoriya Himiko. Himiko said with a toothy grin. Midoriya Mei. Mei said happily. Midoriya Kayoka. Kayoka said as she twirled one of her ear jacks. Midoriya Carolyn, Midoriya Justine. The twins said at the same time. Midoriya Hinoka. Hinoka said with a bow. Midoriya Sarabella and the hat is vice versa. Sarabella said as vice versa shook All Might's hand. Greeting All Might I'm Midoriya Florence. Florence said. I'm Nunnally by Midoriya. It's a privilege to meet the symbol of peace face to face. Nunnally said as she shook All Might's hand. You already met me, but it's nice to use my true name I am Midoriya Esdith. Esdith said with a smile. Same with me I'm Midoriya Fubuki. Fubuki said. This shocked All Might even further he was also married to help lizard duo. Midoriya Olga. Olga said simply. Midoriya Benia. Benia said with some cheer. Midoriya Anil. Anil said with a gentle smile. I see well then I will help Midoriya Shonen. Also my name is Tashinori Yagi. All Might said as he gave his real name. Thank you Yagi-san. Fubuki said. Now then I have an idea and how to help Izuku-san training. Tashinori said. Oh you do. Inko said as Tashinori smiled. While well, Inko and Tashinori talked Izuku and his harem kept watch of Izuku and Iri. Iri are you okay? Izuku asked as Iri nods. Yes. Iri quietly said as she hides behind Izuku. It's okay Iri they're nice people. Izuku said with a smile. Olga mutters a scanning spell to see Iri's memories her widen at the time Iri was with that man and frowns. She sends a mental message to the rest of the harem and Izuku. Upon the message being received Izuku was angry Akai for what he did to Iri. The harem on the other wanted Kai's head mounted on their wall. Olga, Esdith and Achako especially the latter for having seen how scared Iri was of Kai and the former, due to them being mothers. Iri right. I want you to hear me for a second okay. Olga said in a gentle voice. Iri looks at Olga and nods. Okay I want you to listen very carefully to me. Your power is a gift not a curse. Olga said making Iri confused. The but Kai said. Iri started to say until Olga put her finger on her silencing her. He's wrong about your power being a curse, can it hurt people yes, but it can also help them. Olga said making Iri eyes go wide. Izuku being a quirk nerd that he has wondered what Iriga was talking about. Um Olga-chan what is Iri's quirk? Izuku asked curious about the little one's quirk. If I have to give it a name it would be rewind as for how it works, it can take living being back to a previous state, even to the point of non-existence. Olga said in a serious tone. This makes Izuku's eyes widen that is an extremely powerful quirk. If harnessed correctly it can heal the most grievous of injuries and even give an old withered crone her youth back, and I can expect Midnight and Pixie Bob of the WWP would give anything to get their youth back. Olga said as she chuckled at the pro heron's bit. Izuku muttered at the possibilities of Iri's quirk. My power can help people. Iri asked looking at Olga. Of course Iri you just need to control it, and once you do you'll be best healer in the world. Olga said with a smile. Iri hugs Olga but doesn't smile. Izuku smiles at this. It makes him happy he met his idol and was chosen to be his successor, and having saved Iri. Now he saved a child and from what his wives know about her, they want to protect her and the fact that Fubuki and Olga would want kids thanks to Iri. Yeah hopefully that goes well. Ah um, Midori is shown and I have a great idea on how to train you. Toshinori said. Three months later, Izuku is now jogging to Dagaba Beach a place that was once a beautiful beach, but was soon turned into a dump. Izuku was tasked to clean the place up for the community well that, and to see if he has the strength to use Toshinori's quirk one for all. Alright okay he also wants to see his wives in Bikinus as well geez. Anywho in regards to Iri. He had officially adopted her as his daughter, well technically Fubuki adopted her but details, the moment that she had called him Papa he cried, which made Inko cry, which resulted in Esdith freezing the two Midorias, as to not flood the hospital again. It only took a week to formalize the adoption. It kinda helps that you have the help of two pro heroines and the symbol of peace on your side. So far no problems on that front and now he was training to be the next symbol of peace. Ah Midoriya Shonen it's good to see you. Toshinori said in his All Might form. Doing well All Might and you? Izuku asked. 
doing good. Now then let's finish this young man to think you would do this in almost 3 months. Tashinori said surprised by Izuku's progress. Yeah good thing Mei is willing to take the parts from the dump so that we don't have to pay a dump truck. Izuku said as he starts to collect some garbage. I know she's one of your wives, but what the hell does she do with said parts? Tashinori asked wondering what she does with this stuff. Well she likes inventing to a point where she calls them her babies, and before you ask she was like this before I married her. Izuku said as Tashinori nods. He had learned long ago that all of his wives have their quirks for lack of a better word. From Ichako's being the leader of the harem, he still couldn't wrap his head around that one, as he sparred with Ezdith and Tupyuki, to Himiko's Yandresque devotion to Izuku. Appa we're here. A young voice shouted. The two heroes turned to see Iri and a little boy with will fears, with Ezdith and Tupyuki nearby. Iri looked a lot better as she is now dressed in a white dress shirt with a frilled collar and a plain red pinafore with two large golden buttons on either side of her dot under this, she wears grey tights and a large set of tan boots, and a small dark red messenger bag, with a strap sitting over her right shoulder, and a little floral pattern decorating one of its sides. She also carries in her a black wand with two wings near the top, a single snake coiling around it, and a blood red jewel on the top. Next to Eerie is a little boy with pale skin and bright blue hair with two wolf ears on top, he also has green eyes and is wearing a white shirt and shorts with sandals. He is Midori Yukimaru's son of Izuku and Ezdith. His quirk is Fenrir. He's also happy to see his papa. Calm down my son he's not going anywhere my little Yeager. Ezdith said as she cuddles her little toddler of two years. Hey Izu we're here how's the beach coming along? Fubuki asked. Doing well just one more pile of garbage and we're set. Izuku said. Um seems easy enough. Ezdith said as Yukimaru looks at Izuku and tries to reach out to him. Oh, Yukimaru. Izuku said as he shakes his head. Izuku sighs and walks up to Ezdith and takes Yukimaru. Say all might can I look after him for a bit? Izuku asks. Sure we have all day. Tashinori said with a smile as Izuku played with his son and daughter. Izuku looks after Yukimaru and mostly to make sure he doesn't use his quirk too much. His quirk Fenrir gives him will features, enhanced speed, strength, regeneration and ice powers. Izuku believes that his ice powers comes from his mother specifically her Tigu. The demon extracts and from Ezdith told him it granted her ice powers and freezes anything, and it used to make her insane, but she seems to calm down after he had with her the first time, and even became nice after they conceived Yukimaru. Which was odd until Kitsuki told him that the creature that made demon extracts was horny. It was dumb, but Izuku had no other answer. But right now he was playing with Yukimaru and Iri. After a bit he went back to training and took the last pile of garbage to Tashinori's truck. Okay that's the last one all might. Izuku said as he wipes the sweat off his brow. This is amazing, but I have no idea how to improve on your training well I do have an idea, but he scares me. Tashinori said as he shivers in fear. In Izuku mind only one thought comes to it, but that no who the can make all might act like a little bitch. Izuku thought as he channels his inner Katsuki. Well if he trained you I guess we can ask him on what to do. Izuku said as Tashinori grimly nods. When he got Midoriya's approval, Tashinori uses his phone to contact the person that scared him. Izuku still wondered who would scare All Might. A week later, ah. Izuku shouted as he was slammed on a training mat. Now I can see how this guy made All Might his bitch. Izuku thought as he sees the guy that tossed him like a sack of potatoes. The person who tossed him is an extremely short elderly man with heavy wrinkles and a scrawny build. He had a light complexion and yellow eyes. His hair is grey and spiky, styled short with some bangs hanging forward and a trimmed beard. He is dressed in his hero costume consists of a full body monochrome suit along with a yellow cape, a belt with a letter G on it, very thick yellow gloves and boots, and a dark domino mask which resembles two diamonds. The Asorahiko Torino also known as Gran Torino. Hehe <laughs> glad to see I can whip whippersnappers in place. Sorahiko said with a grin. Die. Toria. As Sorahiko was grinning Katsuki and Makoto tried to fight Sorahiko, only for him to dodge and kick them, and both of them are brought them down. As for why Katsuki and Makoto were here Katsuki and Makoto overheard Izuku was training with All Might. Katsuki got pissed and wanted in. All Might in a panic told Katsuki why he was training Izuku by accident. This pissed him off further until All Might acquiesced. Now Katsuki and Makoto, who came along for the ride, were now training, and by training what really meant is getting ones kicked repeatedly. Ugh, now I can see how this guy made All Might his bitch. Katsuki said as he struggled to get up. Yeah at least he's not sandbagging me. Makoto said with a grin. Through the old fart is not bad. Katsuki said with an equal grin. I'm impressed, now let's take a break. Sorahiko said as he takes a break. But now then how long would Deku be training with this guy? Katsuki said as he drank some water. 
The reason Kitsuki called Izuku Deku was a way to be ironic, since the word itself meant useless and to pre-MS, military school, Kitsuki it meant defenseless Izuku. Now it brought him a sense of irony to him every time he said it, since meeting his wives and giving him magic and shit, and he made sure to tell Izuku the new reason that he calls him Deku. Even Izuku got a laugh or two out of it, though Achako said that to her it was short for Dekiru or you can do it. Needless to say the word Deku no longer hurt him. Until the UA entrance exam. Izuku said still laying on the floor. Am I don't envy you at all Deku. Kitsuki said with a grin. Okay brats breaks over now back to training. Sorohiko said as Izuku got up and started training once more. And for the next 5 months it was like this. We see Izuku doing exercises, practicing magic and his quirk training with Tashinori and Sorohiko. Even the wives that are going to the first year hero course of UAU began training with Izuku. Achako was sparring with Makoto. Ayoka is sword fighting with Kitleya. Amiko trying to dodge and fail, Sorohiko. Even those not going to the hero course but still going to UAU is training. Mei is doing push ups. Nunali is jogging with Izuku. Benny is working on her magic. The Velvet twins are sparring with one another. Those that are not going to UAU are even training their hardest. Yukimaru is trying to use his ice powers to impress Ezdeeth, but it didn't work, but before he could start to cry, Ezdeeth scooped him up and gave him a hug. Iri meanwhile is using her quirk and wand in tandem to try and control it. After five months Izuku, his mother and the harem all went to Dagaba Beach early in mourning for privacy. Midori is shown in eight months ago you were to be honest pretty buff, but I think you needed just a bit more. Now I can safely say you are ready for my quirk one for all. Tashinori said with a smile. Wow all might I am honored. Izuku said. Now then young man to become the ninth user of one for all you must eat this. Tashinori said as he showed him a piece of his hair. A uh, what? Izuku said confused at this. To receive my quirk you need to ingest some of my DNA and a strand of my hair is the safest way. Tashinori said. Uh, since DNA is involved this is probably the safest and least gross way to do this. Carolyn said as Justine nods. Agreed Carolyn. Justine said though she was a little green. Well I didn't expect this. Izuku said as he holds the hair in his hand. Izuku are you sure because I know you have more than enough power to be a hero. Inko said believing that getting one for all is a bit excessive. Don't worry mom I know that, but an opportunity from All Might is something I won't pass up. Izuku said as he ate the hair. After a bit Izuku felt nothing. Um so now what? Izuku said. You just need to let it digest. Tashinori said. Okay All Might. Izuku said as Olga uses a scanning spell on Izuku. While scanning she detected fragments of souls, seven of them with an eighth one being developed. She suspected that one was All Might's soul. As for the power itself it was massive it was like a giant brazier with a giant green flame. This feeling of this flame made her feel safe and it also feel powerful. Olga thought that maybe she could take a little bit of that power for herself. Olga used a bit of her magic to take some of this power, but as she tried the souls blocked Olga attempts. I'm curious. Olga said as she stopped her attempts. Whoa all might I'm feeling it. Izuku said as he started to feel the power. Good let's test it out now then all you have to do clench your butt cheeks and yell from the bottom of your heart the word smash. Tashinori said as he gave a half-assed explanation on one for all. Izuku felt a tingle of power coursing through him as clenched his butt cheeks and giving a mighty yell. Izuku is now in a medical room but not any medical room. It's the one of UAU. The interior of the room has a work desk for the medical staff, including a computer and a drawer with unspecified medicine next to it. It also has two beds as well as two chairs, one for the patient and the other for staff. The W room is decorated with medicinal posters on the walls. The doctor who is checking up on him is the youthful heroine. Recovery girl. Recovery girl is a short elderly woman with gray hair styled into a netted bun, a large syringe poking diagonally out of it to the left. She has a notably small nose and eyes which are usually drawn as two little dashes, and a long mouth with defined nasolabial folds. She wears a doctor's lab coat and a dress with yellow and red vest-like designs on either side, two yellow buttons, and a belt with a pink R-shaped buckle. She wears pink boots and has a helmet around the sides of her head, a purple-tinted visor joining it over her eyes. In addition, she walks with a cane designed like a syringe that she can also use for healing the injured. And right now she is shaking her head. But grief Tashinori what on earth were you think for improperly teaching your successor on how to use one for all? I'll hit you with my cane, but I think Ms. Midoriya and those girls already did that for me. Recovery girl said with a frown. All Might is on another bed wrapped in bandages with Inko watching him like a hawk. Well at least my lung and stomach are back to normal thanks to Iri Shoho, so I'll say it was worth it Chio sensei All Might said with his trademark grin. The now named Chio fascipumed at that, but sighed as she couldn't refute that. From what he and Midoriya told her Eerie's quirk also known as Rewind, regressed Ashinori's body about 5 or 10 years back, thus restoring All Might back to his prime. 
only for Midoriya's mother Inko to finish what the young man's harem started. I suppose that's good I've informed Nezu and Gran Torino about what happened. Chiyo said. Girls I'm okay. Izuku said as his harem is giving him some TLC. The harem ignores him and give them their care. I hope that young man knows about protection. Chiyo said. Izuku heard her and turned his head to face her. Trust me my mom and Florence warned me about STDs and how to prevent them. Izuku said. Oh good and if any of you girls are going to UAU we provide free IUDs. Chiyo said making the girls that are going to UAU blushed and nodded. The door opened revealing four figures. The first person is a tall young man with a very muscular build who possesses a number of noticeable scars around his lower arms. His face is very unique due to his blue oval shaped eyes, drawn in a simplistic style with no visible sclera and nose which is prominently rounder than most others. He has blonde hair, the top part of which is arranged in a cowlick, while the bottom section is worn swept backward. He wears a school uniform, he dresses like most of the male students, without the blazer. He wears a belt with a large rectangular golden buckle in the shape of a carnivorous mouth. The second person was a tall, lean but muscular man with rather sharp and elongated features. His shiny hair was always worn smoothed down and parted to his left and was of a dark green color, with three yellow streaks towards the front, two on his right and one on his left. His eyebrows were also yellowish, matching the rims of the triangular glasses he wore and the strikingly bright yellow arises of his stern-looking eyes. His looks gave off a sense of authority and power as he rarely smiled and looked stern and he always appeared to be glaring. Unusually for a pro hero, he prefers plain office clothes, a plain white suit with gold buttons, a white dress shirt, and a red tie with white dots, instead of an elaborate hero costume. His clothes, however, seemed to be quite durable, as he used them during battles, and they didn't show any sign of damage or tearing. The third person is a stout man who appears to be a possible combination of several different animals, including a dog, a mouse, and a bear, which would make him a chimera. He has the head of a mouse with circular black eyes, a large scar over the right one, and relatively rectangular shaped ears with pale pink insides slanting outwards from the top of his head and an elongated muzzle with a small round nose. His fur is white and has large dog-like paws with pink pads and a thin tail like that of a cat. He sports a white dress shirt, a dark red tie around his neck, a black double-ed waistcoat and matching dress pants. He wears orange lace-up sneakers with incredibly thick soles, which seem to be quite large on him. And the last one is Gran Torino. That's right. It's me, Nezu, the one who could be a dog or a mouse or a bear, but more importantly I'm the dean of UAU. Nezu said. We came as fast as we could. Gran Torino said as he breathed every word. But Lord Sorohiko calmed down. Chiyo said as Sorohiko did just that. I'm fine Chiyo though I think Mirai is broken. Sorohiko said as he chuckled. Mirai just looked at All Might. Dumbfounded at what he is seeing. Ashinori is that you? Mirai asked. It's me Mirai or is it Sir Night I now? All Might said. Yeah it's me all might. Mirai said as he chuckled. Present day. After that tearful reunion and a small argument about Izuku to which his, hopefully, future senpai Mirio told Mirai that he didn't want one for all, that he wanted to be a hero with his own power, and the baleful glares of his harem finally made him shut up. Now he's about to take the first step towards his goal to be a pro hero. Until his trips on a stone that is sticking out. Well that's one hell of a way to start. Izuku thought as he fell. Until he feels a familiar floating sensation. Oh thanks for that Ichako. Izuku said as Achako gets him straight up. She turns off her quirk, and the two of them goes to the exam. Bue High Auditorium, everyone was in the auditorium engaging in idle chatter Izuku was next to Katsuki. It was awesome. And then he saw him at the center of the stage. It was the voice hero. Present Mick. Present Mick is a tall, slim man with long blonde hair, which he wears spiked upwards in a huge tuft behind his head, and a small, brown mustache. He has rectangular eyes with concentric greenish-yellow pupils, red in the manga, and he is almost always seen with a large smile on his face, and has never been seen drawn with nostrils. His hero costume consists of a black jacket with a very tall collar, upturned and complete with studs, and matching black pants and knee-high boots. He sports tan shoulder pads and a red belt and elbow pads, all studded, and black fingerless gloves. His neck is always obscured by a directional speaker which he uses with his quirk. He always wears a pair of headphones with the word Hage written on the headband and a pair of orange tinted shades. Everyone say hey. Present Mick shouted. All he got was silence. Geez tough crowd. Anyway let's get started with the explanation of the practical exam. Present Mick said as he explained how the exam worked. But it consisted of beating the shit out of some robots which are marked with points, and whoever gets the most points will get one of the coveted spots for UA High Hero course. One guy with blue hair and glasses tried to interrupt, but a glare from present Mick shuts him up and provides to explain the zero-pointer obstacle. 
Okay that covers the bases now in the past we used to tell future students about additional points upon getting their letters, but due to recent law changes and lawsuits against us and yes we were sued and we lose badly. We are now obligated to tell you about rescue points. Present Mick said. Rescue points. Izuku and Katsuki said to themselves. Present Mick heard Izuku. That's right young man. In order to get those points you need to help your fellow examines be a rescue, first aid if they are injured and escorting them out of the exam area. Present Mick said. The students nods at what Present Mick said. Now then it's time for the exam and remember the school motto go beyond plus ultra. Present Mick said as the students cheered. This is it. Izuku said. Test Site B. All of the students who were sent to Site B are now waiting for the exams. Izuku concentrates for the exam when he spots Achako doing some stretches she noticed, and she gave him a wink. Izuku walked up to Achako ignoring the stuck-up guy that tried to interrupt Present Mick. Hey Achako you ready for the exam? Izuku asked. Sure and we trained our asses off for this. Achako said as Izuku chuckled. Say Chako what do you say after the exams we have a private celebration. Izuku said with a smile. Oh my Mr. Midoriya I just need to do my best and go beyond. Achako said. Plus ultra. Izuku said with smirk. They went silent for a few seconds until they start laughing other students overheard and laughed as well. Okay. It's go time. Hizashi shouted at the gates opened. When this happened Izuku grabbed Achako's hand and activated Ofa. Full cowl a technique he made during the last two months of training. Using only 5% of Ofa both cinnamon rolls went to the test area. The other examines looked confused and the stuck up guy asked. Um what's going on? The stuck up guy asked. As Ashi looked at the other examines and fascinated. Oh I. There is no countdowns in real life the practical exam has already started. His Ashi shouted. This got the other examines off their asses and went after them. Exam area. Izuku and Achako are currently fighting robots making sure to let lots of points they also spotted Kaioka and she was getting points as well. Girls how are you doing? Izuku asked as he punched another robot. 30 points Greeny. Kaioka said as she stabs another robot. 38 points Deku. Achako said as she caused two more robots to fall. 45 points and I'm going strong. Izuku said as he casted maps iodine on a group of robots. Am Greeny you, uh oh Izuku, Achako we got trouble. Kaioka said as she spots the other test takers. Crap well let me help you out hi Akariron. Izuku shouted as he increased their power, defense and speed. Thanks Greeny got to go. Kaioka said rush towards more robots. See you later Izuku. Achako said as went her way. But the teachers. The teachers of UAU are watching the students doing their exams or rather were watching until Tashinori told them about Izuku. Nezu and present Mick aka Hizashi Yamada were laughing their asses off. Hound Dog the guidance counselor would have had his jaw dropped if he didn't had his muzzle. Narumi Kayama also known as Midnight was pouted and mumble on how unfair it was. Anishiyama was stunned, 13 gobsmacked, Lunch Rush, Snipe and Ectoplasm were silent. Sekijiro Kansas turned to his co-worker Shota Azawa. Aram boy is your problem. Sekijiro said as Shota sighs. Midoriya san knows how to brew a killer coffee. Toshinori said. I and I won't expel him immediately. Shota said. You couldn't expel him anyway since you're a Tai and not a teacher. Hizashi said. Our loader also known as Higari Majima gave his two cents. If I recall correctly one of his wives is in the support course. Higari said. Really? Good lord what next pro heroines being in his harem? 13 said. Ah funny you should say that. All Might said as he rubbed the back of his head. I was never mind which ones. 13 said being done with this. The Hell Blizzard duo. Toshinori said making Nezu laugh even harder. Well that's dumb and why do I get the feeling Fubuki is gonna want to play out a teacher x student fantasy. What's next don't tell me Izuku is Yukimaru's father. Narumi said as she fascinated. Yup now how about we just watch the students. Toshinori said. Nezu at that moment stopped laughing and pressed a big red button. Indeed Toshinori. Nezu said with a grin. Exam area. Izuku breathed heavily as he managed to take down many robots and had saved multiple exam takers. I think I got 75 points. Izuku said as the ground began to shake. Izuku turned around to see a massive robot rising from the ground. It was the zero pointer. I guess it's time for me to go. Izuku said. As he was about to leave until he heard a familiar voice. Oh damn it, help me. Kayoka said as she was trapped under rubble. Kayoka. Hold on I'm coming. Izuku shouted as he rushed to Kayoka's side. Izuku soon used his telekinetic quirk to lift the rubble out of the way. Izuku used his quirk to pull Kayoka towards him. Thanks Greeny. Kayoka said with a blush. I'd be a terrible husband if I didn't save my wife. Izuku said as he kisses Kayoka's cheek, making Kayoka blush brighter. Damn it Greeny. Kayoka shouted as Izuku chuckled. Can you move? Izuku asked. Kayoka tries to move her legs, but soon some pain shoots from her ankle. 
No I think my ankle busted. Kayoka said. No problem Kayoka I'll fix it, Dieran. Izuku said as he casted his healing spell. The spell hits Kayoka and heals her ankle. Kayoka moves it around to get a feel for it and then stands. Thanks Screeny. Now what do we do about that robot? Kayoka said as the zero pointer smashes the test site. I trained my magic for this moment. Izuku said with a smirk. Oh crap you mastered it didn't you? Kayoka said. Okay charge the mana condense it and unleash it. Izuku mumbled as he charged his magic. Oh boy better find cover. Kayoka said as she finds some cover. The magic appeared on Izuku's hand now fully charged. Take this. Mejidalian. Izuku shouted as he fired his spell. The spell hits the zero pointer, thus destroying it. Time's up. Hizashi shouted announcing that the exam is over. Okay the exam is over let's meet up with Achako okay Kayoka. Izuku said as Kayoka nods. A stuck up guy just looked at Izuku and muttered about how he obtained a lot of rescue points. A week later, a week has passed since the exam and Izuku was waiting for the letter. I'm kind of nervous right now mom. Izuku as he waits for the letter. I'm sure it will be fine sweetie. Inko said. You're right though I haven't heard from Fubuki in a while. Izuku said wondering where Fubuki is. I'm sure Fubuki is fine. Inko said as knock came from the door. Inko went to the door and saw an envelope from UAU. Oh Izuku. The letter is here. Inko said as she holds the letter of UAU. Alright then. Izuku said as he opens the letter where a hologram of Fubuki appeared. Hey there sweetie if you got this letter that means you passed as to how you passed well. The 75 villain points was just enough to get you into the hero course. Fubuki said making Izuku smile. Though he realized one thing what was Fubuki doing in this recording of UAU. And of course we still need to add up the 125 rescue points you got, also I'm pretty sure Bakugu is pissed off right now. Fubuki said with a wink and chuckled. Oh boy I hope he and his harem can handle it. Izuku said. It was a new morning for the Midoriya household. Izuku was packing his things to move to the UAU dorms. Since it had been a few weeks since the entrance exam and had fun times with three of his wives. He had fun. When he saw Bakugo he demanded a match between him and Izuku. They fraud and it ended in a draw for now. Now he was done packing the last box. Izuku rubbed the sweat off his brow. Okay then all done. Izuku said as he looks at his now empty room. It was then Inko entered the now empty room. Izuku are you ready? Inko asked as Izuku nods. I am mom and I'll be sure to visit you when I can. Izuku said. Oh just make sure to get me more grandkids Izuku. Inko said with a smirk. Izuku blushed a bit but soon got an idea. How about you get me a sibling and we have ourselves a deal. Izuku said with a smirk of his own. It was now Inko's turn to blush. She gently hits Izuku's shoulder and pouts, but then smiles knowing that Izuku won't be alone. Okay I just need to call Ichako and the others and we'll head on our way to UAU. Izuku said as he did just that. UAU, dorms, Izuku along with Ichako, Kayoka, Mei, the twins and Nunali all went to the UAU dorms. We're almost there girls the UAU's dorms. Izuku said excited for this. Please be calm love the dorms aren't going anywhere. Nunali said as she giggles at her husband's antics. Indeed Izuku no need to excited classes won't open for another week. Justine said. Yeah though I'm pretty sure that May will have baby making fever until then. Carolyn said. Oh please I'm the both of you want to be with your Ani chan May said making the twins blush. Ayoka chuckles at until she sees both Fubuki and the Dean Nezu. Hey guys isn't that Fubuki and the Dean? Kayoka said. Ah young Midoriya san it is good to see here. Nezu said. Hey there sweetie. Fubuki said as she waves to her husband and the other wives. I'm actually glad that you are here first we need to speak to you about your harem. Nezu said with a grin. Okay Nezu sensei what do you need? Izuku asked as Nezu grinned. A few hours later, Amon mean of the dorms aren't going anywhere. A young man with red hair said. Said person is a muscular young man of average height and a rather impressive physique for his young age. He has red eyes that are pointed slightly inwards and a small scar just above his right eye. He also has small eyebrows and very pointed teeth. His hair is somewhat long, dyed a bright red, and spiked away from his head at all angles with gel, two more pronounced tufts spiked on either side of his forehead like little horns. This lofty style takes a full three minutes to set. During school, he wears the normal UA uniform, just with dark red trainers, instead of the usual brown dress shoes. Kiri I want to meet the other hero students. Mina cheerfully said. Mina is a girl of medium height, possibly said a little more broadly than some of her other female classmates, with healthy thighs. Due to her quirk, her skin is a light shade of pink, and she has somewhat square-shaped eyes, with a black sclera and light yellow arises, and notably long eyelashes below and around the sides of her eyes. Her face is framed by short hair, fluffy and unruly, which is a pink color, slightly darker than her skin's. 
She has two thin, pale yellow horns protruding from her head, hooked squarely and leaning diagonally to opposite sides, which seem to be slightly flexible, able to bend a bit to each side. She wears the normal female UA uniform. Mina we might be the first ones here. Ijiro said. A true but still I want to see our new classmates. Mina said as they arrived at the dorms. All of the dorms looked alike, but with the exception of their names. Business, Gen Ed, Support and finally their dorm hero. Look at Ijiro in our dorm. Mina said as she held Ijiro's arm. Ijiro went red as he felt Mina's S on his arm. Ijiro has liked Mina for a long time ever since high school. He hopes that maybe he can confess to Mina during his time in UAU. The two of them enter the dorm and see that they weren't the only ones here. They saw Izuku, Kaioka, and Ichako. Oh hey are you two part of the hero course? Kaioka asked. Yeah we are. I'm Mina Ishido and this guy over here is Ijiro Kirishima. Mina said as she jabbed her thumb at Ijiro. Yo. Ijiro said as he waves at the others. I'm Ichako Yuraka. Ichako said keeping up with the cover story. Kaioka Jiro. Kaioka said. I'm Izuku Midoriya. It's nice to meet you. Izuku said, making Ijiro gasp. You're the guy who blew All Might's core out of the water. Ijiro said as Mina's eyes went wide. Whoa that was awesome. Mina said as she shouted at the last word. Oh it was nothing. Izuku said as he rubbed the back of his head. Oh Ideku are you here? Katsuki shouted as he carried a few large boxes. Katsuki there's no need to yell. Momo said as she carried a small box. Yeah Bakubi not need to yell at you Momo. Kami said as she carried a pair of boxes. Hey they're catching, yeah Momo, Kami. Izuku said as he waved at those coming. Hey Deku, round face, Jax. Katsuki said. Midoriya, you're Raka, Jiro, it's wonderful to see you again. Momo said. Yo guys how's it going for dot Kami said. Mina and Ijiro introduce themselves and Bakugu and the others do the same. Soon after some time had passed the other hero students soon came to the dorms. The first that came to the dorm is a young man with a slim build and a rather feminine face. He has long blonde hair, worn flattened down around the majority of his head, spiked and sticking out to the sides at the bottom of it, with a side fringe that curves upwards a little before it does down. He has notably long eyelashes and bright indigo eyes, giving him the appearance of a young prince. The second is a short girl of a relatively slender build compared to her classmates, and has notably large hands. Her appearance is rather frog-like, she has a very wide mouth, which dips down a little in the middle, just like that of a common frog, and oval-shaped eyes with large blacker eyes, their lower eyelashes visibly pronounced, and she also demonstrates some frog-like mannerisms, such as hopping on all fours instead of running and holding herself in a way that is somewhat connotative of a frog. Her hair is a dark sea green color and is very long, reaching all the way to her waist, with the ends tied together at the bottom in a large bow of hair. She has two shoulder-length clumps framing her face and shorter bangs between her eyes, some of them partially swept to each side. The third is actually the stuck-up guy from the entrance exam. He is a relatively tall and muscular young man with a wide frame. He has short dark blue hair, flattened neatly down and parted on the right side of his head, a small patch completely shaved near the base of his head, and rather square eyes which match the notably pointed shape of his jaw. He usually wears a serious expression, and his eyebrows seem to be permanently pointed inwards, quite thin and long in length, the far ends sharply hooked inwards, and he wears glasses with rectangular lenses. Because of his quirk, he possesses calves that are incredibly thick and shaped like automobile engines, with three silver exhaust pipes protruding from each one. The fourth is a young man of muscular build and has short blonde hair, swept to the front of his head. He has thin eyes with no lower eyelashes. Unlike the other students in his CL, he wears pale grey sneakers with his school uniform, instead of the brown dress shoes worn by everyone else, and the bottom button of his blazer he leaves casually undone. Due to his quirk, he also has a tail. The fifth has short gold hair, parted to the right with a black lightning-shaped streak on the left of his side fringe, which is angled so that it partially obscures his left eye. He has slanted, somewhat triangular golden eyes, and notably small eyebrows. He's slimmer than most of the other male students in his CL, not having much visible muscle M. He wears the normal UA uniform during school hours, the second button of his blazer undone. The sixth is a tall young man of a wide, muscular build with peach-colored skin. His head takes the form of a rock, which is unevenly shaped and pointed at the top of his head, and his jaw is square-shaped. The seventh is a tall, very muscular young man with a wide build. His brown hair is short and spiked upwards away from his head. He has rather small, square-shaped eyes with small black pupils and has a pair of bushy eyebrows just above. He is very large and thick, which are slightly darker in color than the rest of his skin and a notably large, round nose. The eighth is a tall, muscular young man with pale gray hair swept forwards, covering most of his face and bent downwards at almost a right angle over his eye. 
He has six arms, all attached to each other by a web of skin, which are very physically strong, and while his quirk is not in use only the front two arms have hands, the rest ending in thin stumps. During school hours, he wears the regular male UA uniform, the only notable difference between his and the other students being that he is sleeveless to make room for his six tentacles, and he wears a waistcoat rather than a blazer. He also doesn't wear the usual brown dress shoes, instead replacing them with a pair of thick soled black espadrilles. The ninth is a tall, lean young man with chin-length black hair, spiked downwards, with jagged bangs coming about halfway down his forehead. He has almond-shaped eyes, usually stretched quite wide and rather large, with small pupils, straight teeth that dominate his grin, however he has a rather plain face. His elbows have the shape of cylindrical tape dispensers, from which he fires his tape quirk. The tenth is a short young man with the head of a blackbird, possibly supposed to resemble that of a crow or a raven. He has a tan, yellowish beak which is slightly hooked down at the end, thin, red eyes with a small black pupil, one on each side of his head, and a red choker, which he rarely removes. Despite the appearance of his head, however, his body looks like one of a normal human, with rather fair skin. The eleventh is a reasonably tall and rather muscular young man who is well built for his age. He has quite long hair, though it doesn't pass his neck, and wears bangs, parted twice, so as to not obscure his vision. His hair is evenly split between two colors. White on his right side and crimson red on his left, this unusual coloring being due to his quirk. As another result of this, he also possesses heterochromia iridum, which causes his left eye's iris to appear turquoise, while his right is a somewhat brownish dark gray. His eyes, in shape, are quite thin and reserved. Additionally, he has a large burn scar on the left side of his face, which reaches from his hairline to halfway down his cheek. He usually has a serious expression. During school hours, he wears the regular male UA uniform, replacing the usual brown dress shoe with casual pale cyan and gray lace-up sneakers. And the last one is a fairly short girl with a completely invisible body. She is only identifiable through held or worn objects, like pieces of clothing and accessories, and when clothed, her body appears to be slender yet fairly curvaceous. Nezu and Fubuki were there along with the other hero students. Hello and welcome to UA University. I am the Dean Nezu, and with me is your homeroom teacher Fubuki. Ah and Miss Hagaker please stop using your quirk, we have your updated file. Nezu said. Ah poo, oh well. Hagaker said with a shrug as she deactivated her quirk, revealing that she's a beautiful girl with short wavy chartreuse hair, with pink specks, big round eyes, with the pupils being violet on top, teal on the bottom, and yellow on the inside, and light yellow bushy eyelashes. Some of the boys gawk and the boy with a tail blushes heavily. Hey everyone as Nezu said I'm the homeroom teacher of class of 1A. You know me as Sai Storm of the Help Lizard duo, but you must refer to me as Fubuki Sensei. Fubuki said as the stuck-up guy raised his hand. Excuse me, but why are you refraining from using your last name? The stuck-up guy asked. Oh well I'm sure you heard that I'm part of a harem or something like that, um Tenya right? Fubuki asked as the now named Tenya nodded. I was never interested in tabloid rumors. Tenya said. I am and yes I heard of the juicy is the harem thing True Hagaker was surprised at what Fubuki said. Yup the leader of the harem that I'm in made it very clear that I'm not to use my real surname, though it doesn't help that I don't have a maiden surname. Fubuki said with a sweat drop over her head. After confirming that Fubuki sensei is married but also part of harem they wanted to ask questions, but Nezu stopped them. We will answer your questions later, for now we need to make just one more announcement before we leave you to settle in the dorms. Nezu said as the students paid attention. Alright then now you may have noticed a big room at the top of the dorm building well, that is known as the newlywed dorm, as all of you are adults you may or may not be married or expecting parents, this specific dorm was made with the intention of housing said couple or parents. Fubuki said as she explained the dorm. Um I'll be blunt, will this dorm remain empty or is there something you want to tell us? The froggy looking girl said. That is correct Asui-san for you to see that your classmate Izuku Midoriya is married. Nezu said as he dropped the bomb. Everyone was silent about this until they shouted. Wait what Izuku is married the other dorm mates, except for Ichako, Kayoka, Momo, Katsuki and Kami, shouted. Wait what, who told you? Izuku said as Nezu gives a. Izuku was now surrounded by his male class roommates with Bakugu being the exception. All of them wanted to know the same thing. How on earth did he get a harem? Midoriya said I'd like to know how you got a harem, and if I recall polygamy is illegal. Tenya said as he chopped his arms. Dude, that law was abolished two centuries ago. After the old United Nations was destroyed. The name is Shinso Hitashi. Hitashi said. Hitashi is a young man with messy indigo colored hair that flares out in large tufts around his head and notably straight teeth. His eyes are purple with white pupils and are thin and somewhat triangular in shape, pointing downward with no visible eyelashes. Wait what? Tenya said dumbfounded. Yeah everyone knows that the polygamy law stopped being a thing after the world's population dropped to the hundreds of thousands. 
Right Senator a young man said. You're correct, Yasetsu. The now named Sen said. Isetsu has long black hair, spiked upwards and backward to his left, and rounded gray eyes, tilted inwards. He wears a wide, zigzag-patterned headband around his forehead, pulled down quite low, to keep his hair out of his eyes. Sen is a young man of medium height with dark, shaggy hair and dark eyes, which are rather thin and lazy-looking. He seems to have a modest athletic build, the same as most of his classmates, and a slight tan. Who cares if a fluffy boy has a bunch of chicks flocking at him? A mantis boy said. Oh bite me bug boy. Katsuki said as he used his quirk. I'm Kamakiri Tagaru, the now named Tagaru said. The Garu is a tall, slender young man with pale yellow green skin and a bright fluffy green mohawk. His dark green eyes are pointed downwards to the center of his face, and two hooked blades jut out from either of his cheeks. He has no visible nose, and the shape of his head resembles that of praying mantis with mandibles. Who cares ass? So what if Deku has a harem? I have one too. Katsuki said as he outed himself. Wait, you have harem as well. I'm Kawaro Shihai by the way. A black skinned young man said. Shihai is a tall young man with fluffy white hair and black eyes, which are long and thin in shape. His most prominent feature is his pitch black skin, its unusual color most likely due to the quirk he possesses, and his face usually holds an unsure or irritated expression. Ah dot screw it, yes I have a harem. Not of my choice of course. Katsuki said. Why do you say that? A bestial young man asked. I wanted to wait until after college and until I'm financially solvent. Before I start looking for a girl. Katsuki said. Tenya and the bestial young man had the same thought. At least he has his priorities straight. Tenya and the bestial young man thought. Um I'm Shishida Jiroda Midoriya-san. The now named Jiroda said. Jiroda is a tall young man with a very beastly appearance. He has shaggy brown hair covering most of his body. He has shark teeth and his large jaw sticks out a fair amount with two of his lower canines poking upwards from between his dot. He also wears small rectangular glasses with thick black lenses. It's nice to meet you Shishida-san. Izuku said as the two of them shook hands. I'm Shoden Nirinjeki Midoriya-san. Nirinjeki said. Nirinjeki is a chubby young man of average height, with short ice blue hair and a round face. He has large wide eyes with small pupils, and is usually seen looking a little sheepish and apologetic, his eyebrows are almost always pointed upwards. I'm Tsuburaba Kasei so do you have a photo of your wives? Also how many do you have, three or five? Kasei said with a perverted grin. Kasei is a young man with short brown hair, spiked up at odd angles on his head. His eyes are oval shaped, along with his large pupils. Um, 15. I have 15 wives. Izuku said. Silence sat upon them as they heard how many women Izuku married. Uh, I'm sorry, but did you say you have 15 wives? Kasei said Gob was smacked by this. Yeah he did in fact Deku show him the wedding photo. Katsuki said as Izuku showed them a photo. The photo showed Izuku in a green suit and all 15 brides in various dresses. We had a courthouse wedding. First, we wanted to have multiple ceremonies during our time in the UA, especially Kaioka I. She wanted a destination wedding. We're still deciding between three choices. Izuku said. May I ask where? Iida asked. Palin, Sydney, or London. Izuku said. Denki noticed the location and spoke up. Does this Kaioka chick like music right? Denki asked as Izuku nodded. Okay I know that this might not happen, but in my opinion you should do the following. London for the wedding, Fallon for the honeymoon and Sydney for an anniversary. Denki said. Thank you Denki-san. Izuku said as Denki gave a thumbs up. That is manly dude. Ijiro said. Yeah dude oh I'm Tetsutetsu Tetsutetsu. The now named Tetsutetsu said with a grin. Tetsutetsu is a young man with quite long chin length, messy gray hair which is rather peculiar in that it never seems to change shape, and black eyes which are tilted dramatically inwards, each lined with a very thick jagged tan colored substance, which are presumably his eyelashes. He doesn't appear to have any notable eyebrows, and, like Ijiro Kirishima, he has rows of sharp pointed teeth, but still 15 wives damn dude don't you think is a bit much? Another young man said. Well another young man with a speech bubble had a question on the bubble. He also made his name appear on the bubble. Oh you're Fukudashi Manga. It's nice of you. Izuku said as he shook Manga's hand. Manga is a very short young man with fair skin and a blank pale white speech bubble as a head and neck which can change shape and display his thoughts in written form. Well good I'm Hananuki Juzo, and this guy is Bondo Kajiro. The now named Juzo said. Hey there man. Kajiro said. It's nice to meet the both of you. Izuku said. Juzo is a pale skinned young man with angular eyes, mid length spiked hair of beige color, a flat nose and small eyebrows. His most unusual feature is his teeth, which sit on the outside of his skin. He is not discernible, giving him a skull-like appearance, though this is not related to his quirk in any readily apparent way. 
Pajiro is a tall young man who is large and muscular in stature, possessing very wide shoulders in comparison to his slender waist and unusually sizable hands. His skin is a yellow straw-like color, and his head is shaped somewhat like a glue dispenser with a lappet on top, along with seven eye on his face from which he can release his quirk. Um should I ask about how the hell Blizzard duo and Carmilla are married to you? I'm Rin Hiryu. The now named Hiryu said. Hiryu has lightly tanned skin and black hair, reaching roughly down to his shoulders, which he wears in a low braid. His eyes are shaped like those of a reptile, and his eyes are notably small. Was it a quirk marriage? Shoto asked. This made everyone silent since everyone here knew that quirk marriages are banned by international law by the Neo UN. No, they were arranged marriages. Izuku said glaring at Shoto. Looked at him for a bit, then nodded. Okay but a bit of advice for when you have kids don't put them in arranged marriages they will soon be banned as well. Shoto said. Izuku's glare lessens as he nods. I know it was discovered that people can disguise a quirk marriage as an arranged marriage. Izuku said. Okay now a bit of advice to live my dad is hunting down Esdi's husband Aiyu so that he can force me to marry her. So don't say anything about it. Shoto said, surprising Izuku and everyone else. Boy I see hot. Why are you telling us this? Katsuki said. I hate Endeavor's guts and I believe Midoriya is a good man. Shoto said as he left for his room. Everyone thought about it and realized that Shoto is right. Okay fair enough I see hot fair enough. Katsuki said. Um you still haven't answered my question Midoriya-san. Hiryu said. Oh right I might as well tell you guys. It all started when my mom divorced my bio dad after she found out he was cheating on her. Izuku said as he told his story. But the girls. As Izuku was telling his story the girls were wanting to know who Izuku married. Hold up, you're telling me you're in harem with Yubuki sensei as Dethan Carmilla senpai. Mina asked. Yup, so is Kayoka chan in fact, here's a photo of the courthouse wedding we did. Achako said as she showed the same photo that Izuku has. Oh my god it is so beautiful. So any wedding plans? Toru asked. Oh we do in fact Kayoka wants a destination wedding. Achako said. Yeah we're still deciding on a location. Kayoka said as she received a text from Izuku. Oh a text from your shared hubby. A green hair girl said as she wiggled her eyebrows. Be nice Itsuna. Momo said. Tsutsuna is a young girl of average height who has surprisingly large upturned dusky green eyes with long lower eyelashes and notably long and pointed teeth. Her hair is a dark moss green, collectively reaching just below her shoulders aside from a short clump that hangs in the center of her forehead and it grows waver and thinner the lower down it gets. Oh come on ya Momo I am being nice. The now named Tsutsuna said. You're going to be a handful, I just know it. Momo said. Hey she might not be in your class Momo. But you're right in that she'll be a handful. An orange-haired girl said. I can see your point, Itsuka-san. Momo said to the now named Itsuka. Itsuka is a girl of medium height and has a slim build. She has teal eyes and long orange hair that she typically wears tied into a high ponytail on the left side of her head. Her bangs are split into three clumps around her eyes, and some of her hair sticks up in large tufts at the top of her head. So have you done it with Izuku? Nina said with a grin. Yup we had our first time a few years back and more recently when we got our results. Achako said with a grin of her own. Drew oh god when he did us in tandem with quirk god that was awesome. Kayoka said as she drooled a bit. This caused the other girls to blush. Well the vine haired girl was red in anger. Do not besmirch the lord's name and have premarital relations. That is just sinful. A vine haired girl said. Jokes on you Ibarra we were married at that time. Kayoka said with a smirk. The bar is a girl of medium height with green thorn covered vines for hair, one set wrapped around her forehead a couple of times in the shape of a cross. Because of her quirk, she can grow them at will, but she likes to keep her vines at a reasonably manageable length. Just above her waist. Her eyes are squinted and dark green with long lower eyelashes. I see Jiro-san, you're Raka-san. I apologize then. The now named Ibarra said. It's alright shizaki san Achako said. Anyway the text said that we now have a location, and it's London. Kayoka said, squealing. Huh, the birthplace and capital of rock and roll is nice. Hey Yui right, would that be a cool idea for a wedding? Satsuna said. Yui is a young girl with shoulder-length bob-shaped hair, side swept to her right with some shorter strands hanging above her eyes. She has fair skin, an athletic build, cerulean eyes, and she's usually seen wearing a neutral expression on her face. Yui simply nodded at the idea with a smile. Cool when we get a date for the wedding we let you know. Kayoka said. Say I have to ask who else is in the harem besides the help lizard duo, Carmilla, Achako and Kayoka. The mushroom girl asked. Yeah. Who harem in? A horned girl said in broken Japanese. Um Kanoko, Pony we already know who's in the harem with the photo Achako showed us. Itsuka said. 
Inoko is a short girl of a rather thin build, with honey brown hair, curved inwards in a mushroom shaped bob that reaches just below her narrow shoulders. She has a long fringe that completely covers her eyes, hiding most of her face, and her mouth is notably large. Unobscured, her eyes are wide and rather cat like, tilted inwards with rather long lower eyelashes, and her eyes are a warm brown color. Kinoko's pupils are little black crosses, both together highly resembling the caps of cross sliced shiitake mushrooms. Oni is a short girl with a round face and a short equine muzzle, her face framed by thick wavy blonde hair which reaches halfway down her back, some shorter bangs hanging down her forehead. Her eyes are large and round, Prussian blue in color, and she has a pair of tall, lyre-shaped pale tan horns on her head. Her calves are notably rounded, shaped similarly to those of a horse, and she has brown hooves for feet, and a short horse tail poking out from the end of her tailbone. We know what they look like but not their names. Kinoko said. Name us, tell me please. Pony said. Okay note to self, tell Hananuki sent a tutor pony in Japanese. Momo said. Yeah like for some reason I can see some tricking pony into saying insults. Kami said. Meanwhile with said, a chew. Who's talking about me, probably some from the USA. The said. Back the UA dorms, that would be wise. A ghost girl said. Yeah, it would be nice, Yanagi-san. Itsuka said. Call me Riaiko. The now named Riaiko said. Riaiko has chin length pale gray hair, parted to the left, hanging down over her eye and obscuring the majority of the left side of her face. She has dark bags under her blue eyes and a small mouth. Her hands are usually held up as high as her elbows, with her hands draped down, this gesture being somewhat connotative of a ghost. Alright Riaiko, so are any of them in the USA. Besides Fubuki sensei and Carmilla senpai. Itsuka asked. Well I know Mei is in the support course while Nunley is in the business course. Achako said. Amiko, which is Carmilla's real name by the way, is in her second year of the hero course. The twins Carolyn and Justine are in Gen Ed. Kayoka said. Those who are in the USA as for the others. I know Esdith is managing her agency, Benia is in a prep school called Kuo Academy, along with Anil. Achako said. I know that Florence is the head doctor of the nearby hospital. Momo said. Cirabella is a bouncer at a local club last I heard she beat the shit out of a villain with her quirk vice versa last week. Kami said as she lied about Cirabella having a quirk. Anoka and Ariga are visiting their homes for a bit, well so yeah that's all of them. Kayoka said. Oh god damn that's cool I hope that one day we get to meet them. Itsuka said. I wonder if Ibarra would faint if she saw Anil. Achako thought. I wonder if Ibarra will faint if she finds out we met God. Kayoka thought. The girls continued to talk among themselves and everyone was getting hungry. But Fubuki, man, I think I would get bombarded by the questions by the other teachers. Fubuki said as she looked at her lesson plan. Earlier in the day she was questioned by the other teachers about her marriage and the fact that some of her students were in it. Though despite the fact that she had faced many world-ending threats when she was faced with Dean Nezu, it was a god-level threat. She followed her husband's advice about the god-level threat that is Nezu. Tell him everything, and that is what she did. Thankfully she didn't earn the chimera's ire in fact he was impressed by her experience as a professional hero, he was also curious about Satama and Tatsumaki. Yubuki shakes her head as she checks the class rosters. Now in the morning Izuku is waking up with his wives by his side, well not all of them. By his side were Ichako, Kayoka, Himiko, Mei, the twin and Nunley. They soon felt Izuku move. Izuku stay in bed. Himiko said. Sorry girls, but today is the first day of classes. Izuku said. Fui. Himiko said with a pout as she got up in her birthday suit. Soon one by one they got up showing off their birthday suits to their husbands. Normally this would turn on a lesser man, but Izuku has far more self-control, but he still smiles at these ladies, despite being their own people they were all his. Achako notices Izuku's leering and smiles. See something you like Izuku-kun. Achako said as she shakes Himachi. Yes I do, but we still need to get to see L Izuku said causing the girls to pout. They soon got dressed in their uniforms. Shame that I couldn't have a quickie. Himiko said. Himiko the quickie would evolve into an orgy, and also don't forget we're not the only ones here. Nunnally said. I know about Bakugu, in fact I know that Momo and Kami want some action, and their husband isn't giving it to them. Himiko said. Didn't he want to wait until he was financially independent? Kayoka said. He has Yamomo and Mary Ann. Himiko countered. I know but I think he's still angry at the fact that he didn't get to marry on his own terms. Izuku said. I guess if he had his way would be in his 30s when he marries. Mei said as Izuku nodded. Yeah but despite that he seems happy with his wives, I just don't expect him to have with them soon. Izuku said. His girls nods as they soon head downstairs. Once there Izuku spots Katsuki, Momo and Kami having breakfast. Well Katsuki and Kami are having breakfast while Momo is having a feast. Hey it's Izu and the Midori harem. Kami noticed Izuku and his harem. 
Uh, I half expected you to put some babies into them Deku. Katsuki said. Not Katsuki not yet, besides we have classes today. Izuku said. Fair enough, just don't go to Fubuki on her desk. Katsuki shouted. Katsuki, how dare you say such things about Midoriya and our teacher. Tenya said as he waves his arms. Dude, I think Fubuki is part of Midoriya's harem. Kaminari said. Yeah man besides classes don't start till 10, so we're free to do whatever until then. Ijiro said. Well in that case can I make you guys some coffee? Izuku asked. Yes, Deku hooked me up with LeBlanc coffee. Katsuki and Izuku make the coffee. It took a bit, but the coffee was ready. After trying it other than Katsuki, Izuku and their girls, for the first time they loved it. Dude this tastes awesome. Ijiro said with a grin. I must admit this tastes wonderful Midoriya-san. Tenya said. If it weren't for the fact that you were taken 15 times over I would marry you. Satsuna said with a toothy grin. Um I think Kendo wants to. Kayoka said. Kendo wonders if Izuku wants a 16th bride. Because the coffee he made is godly. The general consensus is that his coffee is awesome. Katsuki, Kami and Momo tried it, however. Meh, still third rate to me Deku. Katsuki said, shocking the others. I must agree with Katsuki-kun. Momo said. It's good but not great, bra. Kami said. I know Kakin. Izuku said not really feeling sad about it. Compared to Amamiya and Sakura, yours is passable boiled mud. Katsuki said. I know the Katsuki may be in 20 years I'll be Ren's equal when it comes to coffee. Izuku said. Hey, I'd 50 years too you're equal to Ren, but at least you're better than Sinloli and Kulala. Katsuki said, making the twins pout. The both of them responded by giving Katsuki the finger to which he gave it right back at them as he sipped on his coffee. After everyone enjoyed their coffee they soon got ready for their first day of CL with Fubuki. Fubuki is in her classroom on the phone talking to her sister. You'll be fine Fubuki, those pro heroes don't hold a candle to you and hell even then your partner sister wife could kick all of their asses. Tatsumaki said. I know Tatsu won e but still. Fubuki said. No Fubuki Emoto you're stronger than that, by the way how's your husband? Tatsumaki asked. Well I know Izuku published a novel with the twins. Fubuki said. Uh, he did what's it called? Tatsumaki asked. Why one chan you must have read it already because I gave you a copy. Fubuki said as she chuckled. Um what are yo oh my god Izuku wrote the fall of the twin wardens. Tatsumaki shouted. Yup. The twins wanted a Rala play script but Izuku gave them a novel and from what the twins told me, we'll just look at pages 69 to 77. Fubuki said with a blush. Holy shit I can see him doing that, also he got a tentacle quirk during the session with the twins. Tatsumaki said. Yup though according to Origa-chan that quirk belonged to the fifth user of one for all. Fubuki said. Damn magic, esper abilities and now several quirks for sake they might as well give him the number one spot I know for a fact the Heroes Association is gonna give him an S rank. Tatsumaki said. What was Sweet Mask's reaction? Fubuki asked. The fop is unsure about him. He says he'll have to meet him before giving final judgment, though he told me that Izuku is the luckiest son of a bitch in the world. He went on about how karma was paying her due to Izuku. Tatsumaki said. Considering I know magic exists. I know that the universe's biggest bitch has to be real. Fubuki said. Yup oh boy I see demon and tiger classes charging at the city. Gotta go sis. Tatsumaki said. I, sis, say hi to your boyfriend for me. Fubuki said as Tatsumaki hung up. As that happened the door opened and her students began to take their seats. Alright then class today will be a small one and tomorrow we will do a quirk evaluation. Fubuki said. Sensei, what shall we do today? Tenya said. Um, for now we go to orientation, then the guidance counselors and then introductions. Fubuki said. Thank you sensei. Tenya said as he sat down. Now then everyone let's go. Fubuki said. Soon everyone went to orientation where they learned everything about UAU and its classes. Then they went to the guidance counselors and soon they came back to class where they decided to introduce themselves. Alright then this will be simple you give your full name, quirk, likes and dislikes alright. Fubuki said as the class nodded. Yes, sensei. Class 1 is said. Okay I will go first Monami my name is Aoi Amayuga and my quirk is naval laser, it allows me to shoot a powerful sparkling laser cannon from my navel. It is so powerful, it can blast through 2 meters of solid concrete. But if I fire my laser for more than 1 second at a time, I will suffer intestinal distress. My likes are well myself and I dislike foul things. Yuga said as the class wet drops. Take your seat Aoi Amasan. Fubuki said as this guy reminded her of Sweet Mask. He sits down and looks at a random FIREM 78910. That's it Aoyama as of today, and until the day I die you, your family and all for one will be sent my 4th wall repair bills. Aoyama's eyes widen as a small mountain of bills land on top of Yuga's head burying him. Oni looked at Yuga and shrugged. 
Hello everyone I'm Pony Tsunatori and my quirk is called Horn Cannon. My quirk gives me a pair of horns on my head. I'm able to launch my horns as projectiles and a new set will grow back almost immediately. I can remotely control up to four of them at a time. I love an I'm in apples and I dislike bullies. Pony said as she went back to her seat. Tsai so got up next. I'm Asui Tsai, but you can call me Tsu. My quirk is frog, which is self-explanatory. I do what a frog does and I have the same weaknesses as one. I like jellies and the rainy season. Like Pony I hate bullies. Sai said as she sat down as Yuga dug himself out of the mountain of bills. Mind you repairs to fourth walls cost that much. Yuga said as he saw one of the bills only to be buried by more. Then you marches towards the front of the CL. Hello everyone I am Ida Tenya, and my quirk is engine quirk, gives him car-like engines in each of his calves, giving him incredible running speed and extreme kicking power. I need to fuel his engines by drinking orange juice. My engines have multiple gears, it is currently unknown how many, but it has been implied that there are more than three, and much like a real engine, my quirk requires that the exhaust pipes on the backs of his legs remain clear of obstructions in order to function properly. Tenya said. Tenya takes a breath then speaks again. I also like studying and beef stew. I despise misconduct. Thank you for your time. Tenya said as he went back to his seat. Achako stood up and went in front of the CL. Hey guys I'm you I mean Midoriya Achako, and yes I'm married, though I'm sure you know that, and my maiden name is Yuraka. I appreciate it if you use it during the festivals UAU has. Achako said as the class nodded and Yuga gave a thumbs up. They knew about that since Nezu told them. The same was about class 2 of well only Himiko was in that CL. Any who my quirk is called zero gravity, gives me the power to nullify the effects of gravity on solid targets by touching them with the pads on her fingertips, causing them to become weightless and float. I'm able to cancel the effect of my quirk by touching my fingertips together. I also love starry skies and machi. I don't really hate anything. Achako said as she showed said finger pads. She soon went back to her seat as Mashira went next. Hello I'm Ajiro Mashirao and my quirk is tail which like Tsu's quirk is pretty self-explanatory. Oh I like martial arts and I dislike cheaters. Mashirao said as he went back to his seat. Denki gets up and winks at Ibarra as gets in the front of the CL. Hey guys I'm Kaminari Denki, my quirk is called electrification. It allows me to generate electricity and cover my body in it. I can also emit this energy over a distance, but I have little to no control over it, meaning it will go everywhere indiscriminately. Exceeding my wattage limit causes my brain to short circuit, leaving me in a vulnerable state for one hour. I can absorb and neutralize electricity and other lightning based quirks. Denki said. Denki looks around and then blinks. I like burgers and what's currently trending. I dislike people who mock mental health since I have quirk induced ADHD. Denki said as he went back to his seat. Hi guys, I'm Tetsu 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 Tetsu, and my quirk is called Steel, meaning I can turn myself into steel. I love fighting games and spinach. Tetsutetsu said. Do you also watch Popeye the Sailor Man? Satsuna said with a toothy grin. No, I hate racist things, and Popeye was racist as hell. Tetsutetsu said as he went back to his seat. Tetsutetsu looks at the pile where Yuga is buried. Um, is anyone gonna help him? Tetsutetsu said as he pointed at the pile of papers. We'll do it later. Kaioka said with a shrug. Tetsutetsu shrugged as he sat down. Oji gets up from his seat and whispers in Fubuki's ear that if she knows JSL, thankfully she nods. Okay class Kota San here is a little shy, so he'll use JSL to tell us about himself, and I'll be translating okay. Fubuki said as the class nodded. Hello everyone my name is Kota Koji, and my quirk is called Invoice, it gives me the ability to command any creature in the animal kingdom by speaking to them. Whatever command I gives, the animal will carry it out. However, I'm unable to exert control if they cannot hear my command. The target must also be a real animal and not merely animal-like. I can also exchange information with the animals to find the locations of various people and potential enemies faster. Koji signed. Yubuki translated what Koji had signed. I like nature but I hate bugs. Koji signed. Yubuki translated the likes and dislikes as Koji went back to his seat. Sado Akito here and my quirk is called Sugar Rush. It allows me to increase my strength fivefold for 3 minutes. To do this I need to consume 10 grams of sugar. When converting sugar into strength, my cognitive functions gradually drop, making me very sleepy afterward. For every additional 10 grams of sugar I ingest, I can extend the time of increased strength by another 3 minutes. Akito said. Akito looks at the class and Fubuki staring at him. Oh right and no I can't have diabetes trust me they tried. I also love cake and hate ruined baked goods. Akito said. Akito sat back down as Mizo stood up as he went next. Hello everyone my name is Shoji Mizo, and my quirk is called Dupli Arms, it grants me a set of tentacles alongside my arms. 
I can transform the tips of these tentacles to replicate other parts of my body, for example a mouth, ears, eyes. The duplicated body parts are more efficient than the originals, as a result, I'm able to hear better, see through more angles at a time, and they grant me a much higher degree of strength. I also like squid ink pasta and takoyaki. I hate people who belittle mutation quirks. Mizo said. Dear, hear Mizo-chan. Sai said. Mizo went back to his seat as Kayoka stood up but blew a kiss at Izuku. Izuku caught it and Ichako chuckled with a blush on her face. Yo, I'm Midoriya Kayoka, my maiden name is Jiro, and my quirk is earphone jack. My quirk gives a pair of headphone jacks hanging from my earlobes. When my jacks are plugged into something, I can channel the sound of my heartbeat through them, in the form of a violent vibration attack. I can also stretch them for several meters. This quirk also allows me to hear minuscule sounds and vibrations from my surroundings. I like rock and roll, my husband, kids and I hate it, Kayoka said. Ayoka went back to her seat as Ibarra stood up. Hello everyone I am Shiazaki Ibarra and quirk is called vines. My quirk gives me hair like vines that grow on my head. I can lengthen and manipulate the vines, allowing me to attack, defend and grapple. I also have the ability to detach them at will. The vines will grow back, provided that I give my head proper sunlight and water. I enjoy good bread and I despise lecherous people. Ibarra said as she looked at Izuku. Izuku felt nervous while Lechako and Kayoka glared at Ibarra. All right then I'm Tokoyami Fumikage, and my Kwai Dot Fumikage started to speak until he was interrupted. Is a dark shadow. Basically I'm a sentient quirk that gets stronger when it gets dark and weaker when there is light, and I identify with she her pronouns. Dark Shadow said. Yes what she said I like apples and gloomy places and hate bullies. Fumikage said as he went back to his seat. Got up and spoke. I'm Todoroki Shoto, and my quirk is half cold half hot. Simply my right side makes ice and my left side makes fire. I like Zero Soba and I hate Endeavor. Shoto said as he went back to his seat. How not much I guess. Kibuki said as Toru stood up. Hi everyone I'm Hagakur Toru, and my quirk is light refraction. It allows me to refract light, redirect light and make me invisible. I also love caramels and Dakiri shows. Toru said. Okay I guess I'll go next. Itsuka said. Itsuka walked towards the front. I'm Kendo Itsuka and my quirk is called Big Fist. It grants me the power to enlarge both of my hands to a gigantic size. With their increased size comes enhanced striking power and gripping capabilities. I like black coffee and motorcycles. Also I'm really jealous of Ichako and Kayoka. Itsuka said with no bite. The two said girls chuckled at that as Itsuka went back to her seat and Izuku got up. Izuku took a deep breath as he spoke. I'm Midoriya Izuku and my quirks, yes quirks and they're called magic, superpower and telekinesis. The first one is magic which allows me energy for multiple effects like fighting, boasting their own power and others and healing. Telekinesis is like Tsu, and Ajiro sense said it's self-explanatory. Finally superpower is a stockpiling power that allows me to strike with powerful strike, but if I used too much I would break my bones. Izuku explained. Holy shit. Satsuna said. Ah how Dinky asked. Well I was quirkless for the majority of my life. I unlocked magic at 13, telekinesis at 15 and superpower at 17. I love my wives, children, katsutin and coffee from Leblanc Cafe. I hate those who oppress the quirkless. Izuku said. So any pictures of your kids? Toru asked. After class Hagakur-san. Fubuki said. Hi Midoriya-sensei. Toru said. Shinso-san please stand up. Fubuki said. Hitashi stood up and went to the front of the CL. Hello I'm Shinso Hitashi, and my quirk is called brainwashing. Hitashi said as he awaits the comments on how his quirk is villainous. As he closes his eyes and braced himself he hears nothing. Uh, no comments about my quirk being villainous. Hitashi asked. Um Hitashi one of my wives has a quirk that lets transform into people by drinking blood, I'd be a hypocrite if I gave you grief over your quirk. Izuku said. Okay considering what you told us about your previous quirklessness I don't blame you. Hitashi said. Yeah and a lot of us hates bullies. Sai said as several others nod. Oh right well anyway I like biking and cats. As for the who think certain quirks villainous can go to hell. Hitashi said. Here, here Shinso-san. Izuku said. Well then I'll go next. Satsuna said with a grin. Satsuna walked up to the front of the CL. I'm Tokage Satsuna, and my quirk is called Lizard Tail Splitter, it allows me to split up my body into 50 pieces. I'm able to remotely make each and every one of these pieces move freely and levitate through the air at high speeds. My pieces can also regenerate if they are destroyed or otherwise become unusable. Oh I love dinosaurs. Satsuna said. After Satsuna went to her seat Fubuki looks upon her class then at the time they have left. Alright then since we have 15 minutes of class left we should talk among ourselves. Fubuki said as he phone rang. Fubuki picks it up as everyone talks. 
Oru and Satsuna walks up to Izuku and lightly asked, demanded, to see the baby pictures. Izuku did so and asked Achako if he could. She said yes and Izuku showed them pictures of Yukimaru and Iri. Satsuna and Toru squealed at the cute the kids are. Then his phone rang. It was a text from Hinoka. Izuku raised an eyebrow as he noticed there's a photo attached to it. He clicked on and he saw Hinoka in a maternity dress holding on her belly. This normally would make Izuku a very happy man. Except for one thing. He had with her just a few weeks back and here she is 7 months pregnant. He had a good idea on what happened. Class 1 was now returning to their dorms Izuku was still asked questions about his family. Aoyama for some reason was trying to ask what his children's quirks were. But Izuku told him that he wouldn't answer thankfully he understood. But then Denki had a question for Izuku. Say Izuku how did your wives get used to you? Denki asked curious about Izuku's life with his wives. Well hum I guess I can tell you about how Hinoka reacted to where I lived. For context, she lives deep and I mean deep in the countryside. Izuku said not knowing how to explain that Hinoka was from another dimension where she was a feudal princess. Who will tell us? Satsuna asked wanting to hear about it. Yeah. Turu said. The Chako and Kayoka know about it. Well, it was a few years back. Three to be exact Hinoka came to the apartment. Izuku said as he remembers Hinoka's visit. Three years earlier, Izuku and Inko were minding their own business when a portal opened up revealing Hinoka. Oh, Hinoka-chan. How are you? Izuku said. Hinoka smiles at her husband. Hello Izuku I I'm fine Ryoma says hello, Hinoka said. I'm glad to see you Hinoka, but what are you doing here? Inko asked. Oh, I was just wondering about the world my husband lives in. I was hoping that we can see it. Hinoka said. Oh, sure I'd like that so at what time do you want to go? Izuku said. Um have you two had eaten yet? Hinoka asked. Oh we're just about to have lunch. We're having katsudan. Inko said as she offered the princess a bowl. Oh that's great. I'll have some. Hinoka said as the three of them had lunch. Soon after they had lunch. Both husband and wife left the apartment to where Hinoka was surprised by the sights. The building, the technology, the similarities between Hashidian and Japanese writing, and finally the quirks. From the emitter types to the mutation types. This world was surprising Hinoka more and more. Wow by the first dragons this is so big, Hinoka said amazed by this place. Yeah, there's a lot of places we can visit Hinoka-chan, Izuku said. Um, I really don't know about this place, but I think I may need to change my clothes. Hinoka said as she noticed the stairs she getting. Uh oh, you're right let's go, Izuku said as they went to a nearby store. 30 minutes later, it took a half hour for Hinoka to buy some clothes, though it was not because of her it was because of the employee trying to make her buy the more expensive stuff. She did on the other hand buy stuff for Sakura, Elise, and Camila. Well, Izuku did as she was warned against using her gold. As for what Hinoka got herself. It's a short-sleeved blouse with a sky blue and white stripe pattern, a long red skirt that almost reaches her ankles, a white sweater with long sleeves, a pair of red sneakers, and a red backpack. Well it's not the armor I'm used to but they will do for now, Hinoka said as she gives herself a once-over. Izuku blushed as he sees the clothes she picked. She looks adorable. So how about we look around the stores for a bit? Izuku said as Hinoka nods. As the two of them began to walk out of the store, Izuku thinks that visiting the arcade might be fun. So they did just that. Once they reached it Hinoka was a bit overwhelmed with all of the flashing lights, loud sounds and for some reason the smell of melted cheese. Both of them tried a bunch of games Hinoka lost in some of the games, except for the claw game where Hinoka won a rare prize. Wow, I wonder if Izuku would know about this, Hinoka said as she held a platinum statue out of All Might. In fact, she didn't even want that particular prize, she wanted the stuffed kinshi and pegasus. She did in the end get the plushies she wanted after emptying out the machine of the other plushies. The owner would have kicked them out, had Hinoka not given the other plushies back to save a couple. He agreed if she told him what quirk she had. Going with the story she and Izuku made. She told him that she has a healing quirk which surprised him. I didn't expect that I just assumed you used your quirk to get the ultra rare platinum golden age all might statuette. The owner said. Sorry about that, I was after the Kinshi and Pegasus plushies, Hinoka said as she rubbed the back of her head. Well since you didn't cheat I guess you can keep the statue and the plushies. The owner said as he crossed his arms. Hinoka kept it along with several plushies. Izuku fainted at the sight of the statuette. After that, they shared a medium pizza. Hinoka loved the taste of pizza. Soon they left and the both of them loved their outing, and they soon came back home. Present day. Oh, that was so cute, Satsuna said as she gushed at the cuteness. You happen to have pics of your date, Toru asked as Izuku showed the pics. Everyone cooed at the pictures. Well, I'm just glad she was happy about the impromptu date, Itsuka said with a smile. Now thinking about it, how did your dates with the other wives go? Tsai bluntly asked. Izuku begins to think when he remembered another date he had. 
Oh there was the time I visited the club Cerebella worked at, Izuku said as begins recounting that story. Four years ago, Izuku was walking around the city carrying a bento. This bento belongs to Cerebella and she forgot about it. Now Izuku begins a diligent husband who decides to bring her lunch to her. Soon he sees the entrance of Cerebella's job. Club aces. Huh, I guess Cerebella found another card based job. He sees a bouncer blocking the way and a long line. Rather than doing a stupid plan he simply asks the guy. Um excuse me I'm here to see Cerebella. Izuku nervously said. The item up. Umidoriya Izuku. The bouncer asked as Izuku nodded. Alright then go on and Asir's husband you get two free drinks after that you need to pay for the rest. The bouncer said as Izuku went in much to the ire of the other people wanting in the club. As Izuku enters club aces, he is bombarded by the loud music, colorful drinks, raising debt, and ladies in skimpy outfits with a playing card motif. It took him a while looking before deciding to ask the bartender. Huh, a kid holding Midoriya. The bartender asked as he noticed Izuku. Yeah, I'm looking for Seer chan Izuku said. Ah she's in the back getting dressed so she might be there for a while, but until then have a drink. The bartender said. But I'm dot Izuku started to wait until the bartender showed his hand. I'll keep mum about it. The bartender said. Two rums with coke please, Izuku said. The bartender serves Izuku his drinks. After having his drinks he spots Irabella. Seer chan Izuku said as he walked toward his wife. Cerebella noticed Izuku and smiled. She rushes towards Izuku only to notice the box he has. Izuku what are you doing here? Cerebella asked. Oh you forgot your bento and I decided to bring it to you, Izuku said with a smile. Now thank Izu, Cerebella said as she kissed her husband. You're welcome, Seer Chan. By the way, this place is great. Um, I'm surprised that you picked this place. Izuku said. Yeah I know why you asked since well the last card base job ended in disaster, Cerebella said with a shrug. Another employee noticed the couple. Hey, Bella, I heard about what you said. What's this about a card based job? An employee asked. She told the employee about her time at the Circus of Cards. The employee nodded and left. Thanks again for bringing me lunch, Izuku dot in fact, here's a reward for my hubby, Cerebella said as she gave Izuku a deep kiss. The two of them ignored the cheers of the crowd as they parted. Soon Izuku had to leave since Arabella had to work, but Izuku was fine with that. Izuku smiled on his way home. Present day. Damn dude that's awesome also you drank booze hardcore, Dinky said as he gave a double thumbs up. That is reprehensible, you were far too young to drink, Tenya said. That seems light to me. Pony said. Mom grounded me as soon as I got home. Hell, the bouncer told me that the offer extended to soft drinks as well. Izuku grumpily said. Izuku looks at the time and notices the time. Sorry guys, but I only have time for one more story before Hinoka comes, Izuku said. Wait Hinoka is coming here? Satsuna was surprised by this. Yeah one of her family tradition states that she has to stay with me while she's pregnant, and before you blow a gasket Tenya San Nezu approves of Hinoka staying, Izuku said as Tenya puts his arms down. Alright then, Satsuna said. Just a heads up don't treat Hinoka as if she's made of glass, it won't end well, Izuku warned. Everyone nodded. But it won't be for another 15 minutes, so I guess I'll tell one more story, Izuku said. Oh, can you tell us about the one with the elf quirk, for some reason I recognize her, but I just can't put my finger on it. Denki said. Izuku went silent but then mumbled something. Well, they'd find out sooner or later, Izuku mumbled. He then looks at his class, but specifically his wives, Kitsuki and his girls. They all nodded. Okay for context my wife's donors didn't like her at all, so they gave her a hurtful name, Izuku said. Everyone was nervous as Izuku said that. Tsai, being herself, asked what that name was. Okay her given name is Olga, and her maiden name was Discordia, Izuku said as Denki became white as a ghost when he heard that name. Oh dot like as in? Denki asked, knowing what the answer was. Izuku nods. Yeah, like in Karoinu, Izuku said as Denki apologized. Izuku says that it's okay, and that sooner or later they are going to find out. Tenya, being a sweet summer child, asks Denki what he is talking about. Denki answered and nobody in the class liked it. Beray Pentai how the hell did it get past the National Review Board? Itsuka asked. It's a pre-quirk hentai that has a surprising fan base. Which are equal parts perverted and wanting to fix it via nuking the black dogs. Denki said. Isn't it a bit much? Tenya asked. The black dogs win in the end. Denki flatly said. Um, we need more nukes, Tenya said as he changed his tune. The up had a feeling that would change his tune, Hitashi said. As the class chatted about this Izuku remembers how Olga reacted after seeing Kuroinu five years ago. Five years ago, shock, horror, disgust, and myriad feelings swirled around Olga as she saw the ending of Kuroinu. Was this her future? She only clicked on the link out of curiosity. Wait no, it couldn't be she didn't see Izuku or the others as well. 
Was this from the future where Izuku died or maybe he never existed since this was made in the pre quirk era? Izuku came in with some hot chocolate when he saw Olga crying and the title of the video she was watching. Izuku placed the hot chocolate on a nightstand and walked up to his queen and hugged her. After a few minutes, Olga talked about what she saw. After Izuku tells her the specifics and has an existential crisis. Olga begins to worry about Grown and tells Izuku as such. Izuku tells her to go and check as she opens a portal to Grain. It would be a week until Olga came back with a tired look and a small smile on her face. I bring news Izuku, Olga said, still smiling. Good or bad? Izuku asked. Both, the bad news is that Bolt will try to make his empire, Olga said, making Izuku frown. What's the good news? Izuku asked. It won't happen for another three years, Olga said as Izuku's eyes went wide. That's amazing Olga, should we tell the others? Izuku said. Yes along with Hinoka for we will need the might of Hashido, Olga said. Not only Hashido but no Renbala as well, Hinoka said as she came into the room. Along with the might of Britannia, Nunnally said, coming in with Hinoka. How much did you two hear? Olga asked. Something about an empire and a man named Volt, Hinoka said. No Hinoka-chan, not a man but a dog, Izuku said. Soon the three of them began their plans for the neutering of the Kuroinu. Along with the fall of the shield princesses. Present day. Even after two years Izuku sometimes gets nightmares of that one-sided slaughter of Kuroinu and Estonia. Thankfully the love of his family and friends pulled him from a dark path. It kind of helped that they named him Hero of the Druchi and the Hero King of Grain. As to what happened to the shield princesses, that's a story for another day. As he thought about it someone knocked on the door. Tenya opened the door revealing a very pregnant Hinoka. Hello for those who don't know me, I'm Midoriya Hinoka. I'd bow but the little one won't let me. Hinoka said as she introduced herself. Class 1 to introduce themselves save Izuku, Achako, and Kaioka. Soon members of Class 1B arrive as well and introduce themselves to Hinoka as well. Katsuki on the other hand noticed Hinoka's stomach. What the deku you only fed her two weeks ago? How 9s is she six months pregnant? Katsuki shouted. First off Kaken she's seven months pregnant as for how a quirk misfire, Izuku said in a flat tone. Katsuki was silent for a moment he had a good ing idea of who did this. God damn it Azura. Control your ink quirk already. Katsuki shouted as Hinoka sweat dropped. Hinoka sighed. It's alright Katsuki Azura didn't mean it, Hinoka said. Need I remind you that multiple children including your nieces and nephews were affected as well. I also remember that Auntie Inko and Mrs. Ark want her dead, Katsuki said. Okay, that's fair Katsuki. Hinoka said. Um, Katsuki-san, what was this quirk? Tenya asked. It's called Deep Room where Azura makes a pocket dimension where she can put away her shit. Before you ask me, legs time is all wonky within the Deep Room, Azura thought she could put some kids in there to take care of them. What happened was that the kids turned into teenagers in a matter of minutes. Katsuki said as he explained about Azura's quirk. Damn that's kind of messed up. Ijiro said. Yeah, my dudes, Mina said. This place is kind of fun. Hinoka thought was another morning at the dorms where Izuku was sleeping with his newly, though accelerated, pregnant wife Inoka. Izuku looks at his wife with a smile on his face. Though he is nervous he has experienced fatherhood before with Chloe, Yukimaru and Iri. Despite the nervousness he's excited for his next child. Inoka yawns as she wakes up and looks at her husband with a smile. Good morning Izuku. Hinoka said. Good morning to you as well Hinoka-chan, how's our little one? Izuku asked. At that moment Hinoka felt the baby kick. Oh the little one kicked. Hinoka said. With wide eyes he placed his hand on Hinoka's stomach and felt another kick. The little one is strong. Izuku said. Hopefully not too strong. I don't think my poor wound can take a one for all powered kick. Hinoka said with a light chuckle. Izuku smiled once again though that meant his mother is going to join the yearly Azura hunt. Again. Alright then I'll go make breakfast while you stay and rest. Izuku said. Thank you Izuku and make me those bacon pancakes in that one pre quirk cartoon. Um, I think it was called Adventure Time. Hinoka said as Izuku turned on the TV for her. Izuku chuckled as he nodded. But Hinoka now watching TV Izuku went downstairs to make breakfast. As he made breakfast Denki noticed the smell. How adventure time bacon pancakes. Denki said as he tried to grab a piece only for a spatula to hit Denki's hand. No this is Hinoka's not yours. Izuku said as he continued to make breakfast. You didn't have to hit me. Denki said as he rubbed his injured hand. Well then Kaminari-san if you want bacon pancakes make them yourself. Izuku said. I know, I know Midoriya-san. But still they look so good. Denki said, drooling at the side of the pancakes. Oni came into the kitchen when she smelled the bacon pancakes. Oh pancakes, are those for Hinoka? Pony asked as Izuku nodded. Yup she wanted bacon pancakes from Adventure Time. Izuku said as he placed the last pancake on the plate. Oh, any chance of making the perfect sandwich from the same show? Pony asked. 
Maybe if Hinoka asked. Izuku said. The both of them laughed as the other wives came in and kissed Izuku's cheeks. Tenya looks at the amount of PDA but stops himself. He remembers that he is a married man. Midori Asen while I know that you are married, but please maintain the PDA to a minimum during classes at least. Tenya said as he swung his arms. I'll try Ida san, but I can't promise anything though. Izuku said as Tenya sighs and the girls chuckled. Fair enough Midori san. Tenya said. Izuku decides to make coffee for the CL. It was then that everyone of class 1 was attracted by the black gold that was Izuku Midoriya's coffee. Itsuka was groggy when she woke up, but after that she took a drink of Izuku's coffee. I can be wife 16. Itsuka asked. Sorry but no Itsuka 15 is enough for me. Izuku said. The class laughed at that as Itsuka drank her coffee. Soon however it was now 9.30 and everyone had gotten ready for classes despite there being only a half day they needed to get ready. Now dressed in their uniforms they head on their way to class except for Izuku where he had to take Hinoka to Chio. With Izuku and Hinoka, the couple is with Chio as she checks the general health of Hinoka and her baby. Chio smiles as she finishes the checkup. Well, despite the accelerated nature of your pregnancy, it's going well. Chio said with a smile. I'm glad that my child is safe. Hinoka said with a smile. Of course darling by the way do you want to know the gender of the child? Chio asked. Hinoka's eyes went wide, but then she remembered the machine that Izdith's doctor used. Oh right, the ultrasound machine. I forgot about that. Hinoka said. You don't need to worry dearie, Nezu knows about multiversal marriage. Chio said. You know what I'm not surprised. Hinoka said with a flat look on her face. Indeed, but as I was saying would you like to know the gender? Chio asked again. Izuku and Hinoka looked at each other before nodded. Yes we would like to know. Hinoka said excited to know the gender of her child. Chio told them the gender and the expecting parent smiled. Well then we have the perfect name for our child. Izuku said with a smile. After a few more tests Izuku had to go to CL. A few minutes later, Izuku had entered the classroom with a grin on his face. Fubuki gave him a knowing look as well. I'm guessing that Hinoka told you? Izuku asked. Yup but we can celebrate later. Alright then class change into your gym uniforms for a time for your quirk assessment. Fubuki said. Everyone got up and went to the changing room. With the boys, Izuku and the boys were changing into their new gym uniforms, ready for the quirk assessment. So how do you think this would turn out? Hitashi asked. I don't know Shinso San Fubuki didn't tell about it. Izuku said. Hey that would have been useful. Hitashi said with a small smile. Revelry in the dark. Fumikage said as he shakes his head. Hold on if I were you Midoriya I would have totally used it to my full advantage. Dark Shadow said. Then you didn't like that and said as much. You shouldn't abuse this even more so since our sensei is also your wife. Tenya said as he takes off his shirt. I know Iida said I wasn't going to do that either way. Izuku said with a shrug. Still though you should be careful if you plan on doing some student teacher roleplay. Mizo said with a smirk. Though said smirk was under his mask. Izuku blushed as Shoto leaves the changing room as he is finished changing into his gym uniform. Enki looked at the wall and realized there was on it. Ah guys I think our senpais left a gift for us. Denki said as he points to the peep. Izuku looked at the and glared at it. I'll tell Fubuki about this. We should get changed. Izuku said. Everyone changed into the gym uniforms and left for a training area. But the girls. Dang I was hoping that one of them would pervert us. So that I can poke one of their eyes out. Kayoka said. And if one of them was your husbando Izuku. Satsuna said with a grin. Kayoka and Achako blushed as Satsuna grins and Ibarra frowns. Pony decides to change the subject. I mean the guys are cute especially that Shoto guy. Pony said with a tiny blush. Oh aiming high I see. Toru said who smiled despite being invisible. He just looks so cute and in silent kind of way. Pony said. The upper total bishonin, but he feels ish. Satsuna said. Well then I think we should worry about being heroes right now, but some of the boys are cute. Itsuka said. Yup at least we can go back to the dorms after this. Kayoka said. Indeed. Sai said. The bar glared at Ichako and Kayoka as she leaves. The rest of them got dressed and went into the field. PE grounds. As class 1 entered the PE grounds they see their homeroom teacher and one of Izuku's wives, Fubuki along with another person. Did tell Fubuki about the peep. The other person is a slender and tall, pale-skinned man with messy, shoulder-length black hair that partially hangs in front of his face and half-open black eyes. He is usually recognized for his worn-out appearance, often looking fatigued. His facial hair is almost always in a stubbly, unkempt state, and his eyes tired and flat, unless he's in combat. He sports a baggy black outfit that consists of a long-sleeved shirt and matching pants that tuck into his boots. He also wears a utility belt and his signature wrap scarf at all times. He hides a pair of bright yellow goggles underneath his scarf for when he needs to use them in battle. Hey kids welcome to the quirk assessment. Fubuki said. 
The other person just grunted. Okay how this will work is simple you know those physical tests you did in middle and high schools. Jibuki asked. The students nod remembering those tests and how boring they were. Well just take that, but you get to use your quirks. Jibuki said. The student cheered at this as the other person frowned but did nothing. Alright settle down now. We should get started, but before we start I'd like to introduce to Shota Azawa. The head of security of UAU. Fubuki said. The now named Shota looked at the students. You know I would have said that would threaten to expel the lot of you. Shota said as the students began to argue. Alright. Alright. I get that it would seem unfair, but you're training to be heroes. But you're also free to ignore him in regards to teaching. Fubuki said. Shota groans at this. Yes I underestimated the power of a black mark from UA. Due to that underestimation we are barred from using a more freestyle education. Shota said. Okay then we should get the show on the road. First off the 50 meter dash. Jibuki said. 50 meter dash. Two by two the students began to do the 50 meter dash. Okay then Tenya, Sai you're up first. Jibuki said. Alright then. Sai said as she gets to position. Yes, Sensei. Tenya said as he did the same. 3, 2, 1. Go. Jibuki shouted as they ran as fast as they could go. Then they finished. Alright then Tenya got 3.04 seconds. Jibuki said. Bang it if I could just go into third gear. Tenya said. Sai. 5.58 seconds. Jibuki said. Huh not bad. Better than I did in high school. Sai said. Bachako, Mashara you're next. Jibuki said as both of them got into position. Bachako removed the gravity from her clothes and got into runner's position and shakes her a little. Izuku and Kaioka blushed a little. They did the same where Mashara managed to get 5.49 seconds. While Achako got 7.15 seconds. Yes that's better than I did in high school. Achako said. Good enough I guess. Mashara said with a nod. Alright then Midoriya, Kendo you're up. Fubuki said. Izuku and Itsuka got into position. Izuku began to use 5% of Ofa all over his body. Itsuka was also determined to do her best. Go. Oh. Fubuki said as the students ran. In a flash Izuku has finished first with Itsuka was behind him. Okay Kendo. 4.13 seconds. Midoriya, 3.45 seconds. Fubuki said. Soon everyone finished the 50 meter dash with various results. The test was the grip test. Grip test. Mizo Shoji was lifting over 540 kilograms. Paktopi are white too. Mizo said with a grin under his mask. Izuku on the other hand was lifting over 1080 kilograms. Well shit. Mizo said. Standing long jump. Izuku jumped and almost cleared the sandbox. Achako cleared the sandbox. Tsai on the on the other hand not only cleared the sandbox, but also pasted the UAU barrier. Sorry, Yubuki sensei Tsayu shouted. It's alright Tsayu just come back here. Fubuki said with a both a chuckled and a shake of her head. Repeated side steps. The W class did moderately well. Moving on. Ball throw. The ball throw was a simple affair throw the ball as far as you can with their quirks. Ayoka went first go first she used her jacks to launch the ball. Nailing her a good 312.6 meters. Nice. Kayoka said with a grin. After a bit Izuku was next. Izuku decides to use 100% on a single finger. Elware smash. Izuku said as he flicked his finger hitting the ball, landing him a whopping 705.3 meters. First off yes. Also ow. Izuku said as he casted Dierahin on his finger. After a bit more Ichako was the last one on the ball throw. Um Fubuki sensei does UAU have a lot of these balls? Ichako asked. With a raised eyebrow. Fubuki looked at Izawa who nodded. Yeah we do Ichako, but why? Fubuki asked. Ichako used her quirk on the ball and taking a page from her husband, she flicked the ball. With that happening the ball went up high. And higher and higher and higher still. Until the ball disappears. We're not getting the ball back are we? Fubuki said as she looks at the sky. Not likely Midoriya-san. Shota said. I'll just say it and say that it's infinite meters long. Fubuki said. Yup this isn't the first this happened and it won't be the last. Shota said in a flat tone. Fair enough. Fubuki said. But that the last three tests the standing toe touch, sit-ups and the long distance run. Everyone did well in the last three tests. Everyone gather around as I will now give the ranking of the tests. Fubuki said as she showed the ranking. Thanks for watching this video. If you really enjoy this video. Like subscribe and comment down below and turn on that bell notification. See you in the next video. Goodbye.